Well, the week started off all right, everybody. Uh, Kakinen got his first NHL shutout as a shark in Montreal. And Hurdle fucks up in Toronto. Then Hurdle atones in a city we like to call Ottawa. And then the Sharks can't find their PK in Buffalo. We have some giveaways, though, so at least there's that. Oh, hey now, everybody. What is going on? Show 174. It's a After Dark Takeover by the Pucknologist yet again. Can we stop with this already, jerk? Well, <laughs> What's you, the next you, one we're doing? <laughs> uh, it's two weeks from now. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So welcome back to the unfiltered, unedited, uncensored commercial free sharks podcast. That is the Pucknologist here on Teal Town USA. We got four games to get into, some interesting numbers, another giveaway, but remember, if you can, if you're new to that podcast, hit that subscribe button, follow us on social media, whatever platform you prefer. If you'd like to help support, I just, I'm so disappointed. If you'd like to help support the content we deliver, keep us commercial free. You can use that super chat option during the live shows or hit us up on Venmo at Teal Town USA. All those donations go towards keeping us commercial free. And uh, hey, if you're not live with us on the YouTube, make sure to add your take in the comment section of the video below because Ian likes to talk to people. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, hit subscribe there. Leave us a review. Five stars, especially on iTunes. We really appreciate that. Let's go. It's your weekly wrap. Four games this week. The Sharks went one and three against the Canadians, Leafs, Senators, and Sabres. Three of those four teams, by the way, losing records. And last I looked, Ottawa and Buffalo, kind of like in the cellar of the East, but nope. The Sharks take it on the chin against both of them. So through 28 games, the Sharks are now 8, 16, and 4 with 20 points. Last I looked, 7th in the Pacific and 31 of 32 in the league by points percentage. And just before we came on air, I asked Jerk to do me a favor. How are you doing, Jerk, by the way? I'm doing very good. How are you? Uh, it's, I've been better. <laughs> but I asked Jerk to do me a favor. I said, hey, you know what? With the way that they are right now, it's you know 28 games in. We're just over a third of the way in. What would the Sharks' point total be if you prorated this over 82? And Jerk said, 59 points. If you remember last season, there was 77. Remember, uh, I don't know, I think it was about a year and a half ago or so, Doug Wilson said, we're not as far away as people think. <laughs> From the well- seller, I guess. Well, here's the thing. I mean, there's a, there's a lot that you could dissect with that comment, right? I mean, you know, I think you could make an argument that what he said was accurate. I don't think he predicted that the Sharks would uh, not move from that position. You know, I mean, you can be close all you want, but if you don't move, it's not going to matter, right? Dear and Lord. also, just just for fun, right? Just to have <laughs> a grand funsies. old time. Just to have a grand old time. Uh, if the Sharks do end up finishing with 59 points, uh, you know, again, who's to say, right? Uh, that will be their top, It like, depending on how you want to look at it, like in the top five for worst season in franchise history by points. Um, but here's the funny thing, right? If that wasn't three, funny enough. <laughs> three of those seasons that I referenced in the top five, were not full seasons. <laughs> two two lo- two lockout half seasons and then the COVID hub season two years ago. Oh good God man. Are you kidding me? So yeah, if you take if you take those out, it'll actually be the fourth worst season in franchise history. Oh my God. All right. The uh, the other three in the early nineties, which AJ you're obviously very familiar with those times. <laughs> Who me? you may or may not have been around i i could uh can neither confirm nor deny uh the way that it works here (laughs) when we do a takeover we uh we talk about the game that you just saw so sharks at buffalo oh boy i mean we all know sharks played got their ass handed to them the night before they got a 
go from Canada back to the U.S., but hey, Aaron Dell's going to come in, and he posted like a 9.35 last Tuesday, so what could possibly go wrong? You're going to play a crappy Buffalo team, and and what happens? I mean, there's like two delay of game penalties. Uh, the, the PK, again, is MIA for the second straight game. I mean, dude, this team, they, they, how do you just keep stepping on your dick like this? I don't get it. Well, I mean, it all kind of starts when you don't really have talent, right? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the, the talent, root of the issue here. The, and the talent that you do have, not a lot of it showed up tonight, right? You know? Exactly. I mean, again, you know, the players, the the big, uh, you know, on forward anyway, you know, the big, the top six, right? The big, or even if you want to break it down further, the big four, you know, that we've been talking about at forward for weeks now. Like, yeah, like they're still the Sharks' best option. Uh, out there and they're still the best uh, we're the best players on this road trip but as you mentioned you know it's just nowhere to be found tonight I know LeBanc had a goal which on the power play even which was really awesome really good for him and may or may not have made me rethink my hero zero for this week Um, (coughs) but as you said you know the I'm gonna be bummed if it's not Nieto (laughs) (laughs) you know it's just the Sharks have been carried by their big guys this year and pretty much this whole week, I know Hurdle had four goals, but like the big guys haven't really done a whole lot game to game to string together any kind of consistency aside from like losing regularly. It's, I just don't get it. Like, wouldn't you say on paper this team is better than last year's team? Yeah, I, I would say they, you know, they have the individual players I think are more skilled than last year's team, but when you don't, and I, I don't like to, you know, it's it's easy to call people out from this chair, right? But, like, when you don't play hard, when you don't do the right things, you know, it doesn't matter if you're better, you know? Yeah. Well, somebody ran the numbers, uh, like, a week ago for the road trip and said, look, on pace through 25 games, you had Couture, 42 goals, 72 points. I'm, I'm assuming those numbers went down this week. Uh, Hurdle, 23 goals, 75 points. Meyer, 39 goals, 75 points. Another one that went down this week. And Carlson, 36 goals, 105 points. So all the big names on pace to do better, yet they're going to be almost 20 points worse if you project out. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't even, I don't even know how to math that. And I, I think with specifically with Couture and Eric Carlson, I think you expected a regression, but at the same time, like we've we've seen historically when, you know, if a player is going to like, you know, catch fire and play maybe uh, above their skill level, let's just say, usually you see it for longer stretches of time than just, you know, a week. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let me just say this right now. This is how bad it is in Sharks territory, all right? Okay. Right right now the the you know the official Sharks post game is showing highlights of a teddy bear toss from last night. They're showing barracuda highlights right now. That's you, you know what though the, bad it but is. you know but you know what the Sharks could win 12 to 0 and they would still show those highlights just because whoever, you know, I mean I don't want to flame anybody but that's not exactly appointment theater if you know what I mean. Well, I'm happy that they're showing, like, why did it take this long for them to do that? You know what I mean? It's like, they should have no, been doing I, this. No, I, under, the, I understand like, that. I understand that. But more, my point is more so that, you know, you're never going to get exactly what you need. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what do we have? I mean, Svechnikov takes a hooking call early in the game. PK gets it done. You're like, okay, maybe maybe they're back. But then LeBanc puts it over glass. Two, one of two over glass penalties tonight. The other one from Barabanov. But on LeBanc's one, Thompson would score on the power play. But hey, Bonino finally gets one. There's a little, a couple of firsts tonight. Let me see. It, in a good way, it was Bonino had his first of the season. Lindblom had his first of the season. But it was also the first time that the Sharks have given up multiple power play goals in back-to-back games. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, hurdle with another goddamn blind pass in the neutral zone that leads to a turnover. Uh, you got um, Chichek colliding with Dell after another bad turnover, and Skinner just puts it in the yawning net. And you know that that just 
sticks in Couture's craw because you know he's still pissed that Skinner got the Calder, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Daleen completely leveled Nieto. I was a little nervous about that, but I was like, I wonder if Jerk liked that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, dude, Meyer would look like a moron later in the game where he's, he like tries to get payback for the Darlene hit and just completely whiff. And Meyer later in the game, you know, in the third period, basically got demoted. He got put him and Spechnikov traded lines. Like, is that a message from Meyer? Because he's been kind of quiet the last the basically over this road trip. Yeah, it's it, it seems like like I like I said, you know, Hurdle obviously had four goals uh, this week. OK, and I know <laughs> put your pitchforks away, everybody, because LeBanc was actually point per game this week. Um, but you're right. Oh, it, it, nominee Mar- for the hero. Right. Exactly. And and again, I, I I am of the belief that Meyer is going to have, you know, he's. He's not a bad player. Like this, w- things that transpired this week is obviously not, uh, you know, an example of like what's to come. You know what I mean? He's still, I mean, he still had two assists this week. But again, as you mentioned, you know, trying to blow up Dahlin, uh, you know, for revenge on that hit earlier, you know, completely missed it. And just, you know, the timing on the physicality is not there. You know, he wasn't very good defensively this week. Um, and you know, had a decent amount of shots, but not as much as he's normally taking. And so I'm just, you know, it's kind of feels like it's maybe just one of those weird funks. But I've also noticed, and and like you mentioned, you know, with Hurdle doing the blind giveaway uh, two games in a row, you know, it's it, it, it's that for sure is something that we've seen a lot where that that top line, those two specifically, you know, I it, it almost makes me feel like there's a degree of self-awareness when it comes to like knowing that they're the best this team has to offer. And sometimes that gets them into trouble. They'll try and do too much or, you know, be the one man show kind of thing. And, and, you know, it's to the detriment of the team when that kind of stuff goes on. Dude, I would say these last two games, the penalty kills so bad. Eric Carlson might be back on there. God, I hope not. You and me both. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so anyway, I mean, that's essentially how this, this one should get. It's, God, get get them back to ASAP. Oh wait, no, they've only won two games at home. Well, okay, fuck. It's the That's whole just th- crazy, dude. It's the whole idea of can't win at home, can't win on the road, and there's nowhere else for them to play. So I, I mean, unless they just, you know, I w- I would say that they just play the remaining, uh, <laughs> the remaining fifty five games in a neutral location. But we saw that at the beginning of the season, and nothing happened. Yeah. This is. Can they start playing games at Tech CU? <laughs> I mean, Christ Almighty. Maybe they should, like. Can they just like? I don't know. I mean, maybe the right answer here is that they just don't play. <laughs> I mean, you can't be disappointed. Like, you can't be disappointed if they don't lose, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and what really gets me is that this week, and we kind of talked about this last last week, is the seesaw that is. The goaltenders. You had Kakinen throws up an 872 last night, but at the beginning of the week, dude, perfecto, shutout. And then last Tuesday, Dell 935 against Toronto. You know, one of the better teams in the East, and then gets torched against one of the worst teams with an 865 tonight. It's staggering how much it's just off and on and I believe Quinn w- uh, talked about it. We might have a clip about it uh, here in a little bit, but just finding ways to lose in that it's, you know, you plug one hole, the other one bursts open. And that's just the way it has been for the last, I don't know, five, six, 10, 28 games. <sighs> I don't know. It Any- just feel. I don't know. It, it, it's like I said, you know, we talked about earlier, like the Sharks, I think, on paper, and again, the games are not played on paper, but, you know, in terms of the skill, right? Like, I'm with you. Like, the Sharks are a better team um, this year than they were last year on paper in terms of, like, hey, that group of 12 guys should do something, right? But there's just no... I mean, there's a whole lot of nothing, right? It just feels like there's... They don't play as hard. It feels like there's no urgency, no anything and and you know the big thing that you were talking about on the first episode of the season was we know they're gonna lose just just be exciting be interesting 
And aside from the win against Montreal, this week was not exciting or interesting. I mean, yeah, they hung in there with Toronto, but as you talked about. I thought the Toronto game was somewhat exciting. It was exciting, but then, you know, to see it just blow up on such a stupid moment, right? And Yeah, I mean, they were they were right there. The, I would say that the game was exciting in that after two periods, it's tied. Uh, going deep into the third, it was still tied. And if not for Hurdle, you know, having a brain fart, they, at the very least, probably take a point out of that game. So yeah, exactly. So I was, you know, I was like I entertained, you know, I was excited about that where it's just kind of like, and they had played the night before. So I was kind of impressed that they were hanging around. I expected Toronto to do to the sharks, what Ottawa and Buffalo have both done. But yeah, I get, I mean, I get what you're saying. And, and there definitely was some excitement to that game, but just seeing the way that it ended, right? Like how many times this season, I mean, I can think of at least, I can think of at least four so far this season. And again, the Sharks have only played what? 27 games. 28. So 28 games. Yeah. So like almost, almost a, like almost a quarter of your season, you know, probably a quarter of the season, the Sharks have been in a good position to either win or at least bring it to overtime and steal a point, and then they just crumble. And that's not exciting, you know? That's not interesting. And I I mean, it's interesting for the wrong reasons. (laughs) (laughs) See, and I I would go so far as to say that I didn't see some of this under Boogner last season, where I felt that they did play hard all the Mm -hmm. way to the end. Yeah, I agree. And these last couple games, dude, to, like tonight, I felt like there was some time, some shifts out there where I'm just kind of like, the, like they're already thinking about the flight home. Well, and, and there's a lot of, I made a lot of observations with tonight's game that I do, I want to save for Hero and Zero because I have a whole presentation, but. <laughs> Did you bring PowerPoints? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're, you're right. Like you said, a lot of times it's, there were a lot of moments where it's just like, they're already thinking about the next one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And. And and we forget, you know, we've yet to mention that pr- until I would say really until even though, I mean, yeah, they're down two going into the third period. But really until Jack Quinn's goal, I kind of felt like a uh, second goal, rather. I kind of felt yeah, like the Sharks gonna say were, which were, one. <laughs> yeah, I kind of felt like the Sharks were were in it. Oh, right. And then they're just like, oh, shit, we're down by three. Well, whatever. Um, No, dude, when Paterka scored 16 into the uh, second period, I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. Like, I I had hope, and right out the window as soon as that happened. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to be, like, I don't want to be a pat myself on the back guy here, but, like, going back to the, the no, and I'm not even going to pat myself on the back, really, but just going back to that 2020 draft, like, Paterka was the guy that I was eyeing over, you know, Weisblatt and, um, you know, I, I believe it was Bordalo they took in the second round. Like Paterka was the guy I was eyeing. And then so just you fast forward and it's like, of course, you know, Paterka is is doing things against the Sharks, right? It always just makes you think like, damn it, you know? That's always a kick in the balls. Uh, <laughs> so after a bit of the hot streak, you know, the power play, the, you know, it went cold. I mean, they did get one tonight. They were one for one tonight. That's But that's also, I think, a note of this week in games is – not once did they draw more penalties than they took. They took a lot of penalties this week. 15... Well, that's what happens when you don't have the puck. <laughs> right? But, I mean, <laughs> dude, 19 penalties in four games. That's, that's awesome. Dude. <laughs> um, and then to pile on even more, they continue to have a losing record when they score first. The 13, nice. 13 games they've scored first, they've only won five of those. And... The Sharks have lost 14 games. Half the games, right? 14 of 28. Last time I looked, that means half. They've lost 14 games in which they had a lead. Can you believe that? Half of these games, they had a lead. Not only that, but if you really just want to twist the knife even more, like over half, you know, 15 of 28, or I'm sorry, I guess it would be 16 of 28. Um, (laughs) <laughs> over half of their um over half of their games they lost in regulation so it's not even like they can make it close well you know, it's not <laughs> it's not even like they're stealing a point or they're you know really scaring people well they dude they have 16 losses 
They've in regulation. Lo- yeah, but I'm saying 16 losses. They've lost 14 games when they had a lead. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just give me a break. Uh, and again, like I, 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 and I think anybody who is surprised by this, I think you, you maybe, I, you know, I want to know where you've been living so that I can enjoy that escape from social media. But <laughs> at the same time, like we knew the sharks were going to be bad. I didn't think it was going to be this astoundingly terrible. You know what I mean? Like I thought at the very least, you like, yeah, they're probably going to lose a shitload. But I thought they would have some fight in them. You know. I, yeah, I, I, I do. I would agree that not a lot of fight in the last two games. I don't know why. I mean, you had two days off. I don't know what's whatever. Uh, let's let's. Well, it's up. and especially again. I mean, against Ottawa and Buffalo. I mean, they're the two bottom teams of the Atlantic Division. And not to say that every game, or you're not to <laughs> you say under, that any game is a win. The, you understand that the Sharks are a bottom team in their division. No, and I understand that, but what I'm saying is if you're looking at the calendar and you see, okay, our next two games are against the two worst teams of the division, like, maybe this is a moment where we can build our confidence. Oh, dude. That's, you know, you know that's one of the things that And they that fumbled I... both, like, brutally. You know, combined, you know, if you combine the scores, uh, <laughs> if you combine the scores, they lost 11 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the thing, too, is that they're 31 out of 32 two in the league right now based on points percentage and incredible and Anaheim <laughs> dude Anaheim has two games in hand like if Anaheim somehow wins a game and it should be noted that Anaheim plays San Jose next week <laughs> dude, <laughs> if they could do it all of a sudden they'll be right up there bring on Bedard baby <laughs> I mean holy hell again I said this at the beginning of the show it's like three of four teams you played this week all had losing records this was an ideal time to try to bank some points and then you look at what's coming up it's 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 astounding it's like between now at in in game 41 right so between mm-hmm. 28 and game 41 the halfway mark of the season the sharks are gonna play 13 games there's yep. two against Vancouver losing record Two against Anaheim, losing record. You have Arizona, losing record. And don't forget, we didn't think about the $50 donation, Arizona guy. We have it jotted down. We'll bring that up. (laughs) Uh, But then you have one against LA, you know, doing well. Although, from what I understand, what I've been listening to this last week, uh, LA's kind of had a lull recently. We'll see what happens. Uh, Calgary, you know, like they're kind of in between but you had earlier this week <laughs> Jacob Markstrom, their goalie, straight up saying, I suck at hockey. So, I mean, we'll see where Calgary's at at this point. <laughs> I mean, do it. The, right now, they are, you know, uh, 11, 10, and 3, so they do have a winning record, but either way, I would put them middle of the pack. Uh, Minnesota, kind of the same, you know, a little bit better, 13, 9, and 2, but not world beaters. Then Philadelphia. They suck, Brutal. but then you got to face Dallas, you know, top of their div. Then you get Chicago bottom, and then you get Boston top of their div. So over these next 13 games, dude, that's seven teams with losing records. Only You got three with teams that are essentially 500 and then LA, Dallas, and Boston. You got three games out of 13 that you're going to play winners. And then game 42, that's also against Arizona. <laughs> and the first nine games of these 13, they're all at SAP. Oh, wait, you can't win there. You're two, eight, and one at home. So again, there goes that theory. I just, I'm going to be real interested to see where this team is at after game 42. Uh, so what you're telling me is that if, <laughs> if there was, and, and I, I know this is going to sound funny, but I actually legit mean this. If there was ever a time for the Sharks to somehow make everyone look like an idiot and go on some kind of Cinderella run. It's now. I mean, yeah, if they want to try to pull a 20, 29- or at least I should say it starts now. <sighs> yeah. If they want to try to pull a 2019 St. Louis. Sure. Uh, am I going to be putting any money on that? No, not at all. Dude, I wouldn't bet on that. If somebody fucking sponsored my bet. Oh, dude. Just because I wouldn't want to inconvenience that person. <laughs> Uh, let, let's get to the other games that were played this week, starting off. Oh man. Beginning of the week, 
everything looked great. You're starting a four game roadie back east. We're like, hey, let's get our shit together. Kakinen starts his second straight. And what happens? Chief throws up a shutty. You got to feel good about that. Now, a lot of penalties in this one, you know, and the Sharks, 0 for 5 on the power play, but 6 for 6 on the kill. But again, like I said earlier, it's a game where they were outdrawed penalties. Uh, the Sharks did kill a 5 on 3, and uh, but they were able to uh, score on their opportunities. Uh, if I can in- invoke the uh, catchphrase of one of our favorite broadcasters. Uh, Nieto bangs in a Barabanov wraparound 90 seconds in. At that point, you're going, okay, they're going to start to, you know, get things going. And I know that, you know, Jerk was like, unbelievable. How is Nieto still doing this? I don't know. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, I was, I saw you had even tweeted tonight, like, oh, we need a Nieto goal. And, 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 and full disclosure, had he scored in tonight's game, I was, oh, your head would have exploded. No, I wasn't going to come on the podcast. Like, Uh, it was a really up tempo first. There's a lot of chances both ways, but then the Sharks were outshot eight nothing in the final 14 minutes. Uh, they only had three shots on goal, just over 18 minutes, five on five. But they, again, you know, the penalties just took over, and you had two delay of game penalties in the game versus Montreal, just like they had tonight versus Buffalo. Like I don't understand how that continues to be a factor. Uh, but this is the one game that Benning looked good. Mm-hmm. Uh, block shots and a lot of time on ice. Uh, you were you were feeling good about him. And LeBanc has a shot pass with Hurdle, and you got a lot of good things going. And you know Couture gets in on it, and uh, you know three stars of this one: Kakin and Couture and Vlasic. And I thought you could have made auto, um, arguments for Benning and LeBanc, maybe even Hurdle in this one. And maybe the storyline, though, is the the fact that the Canadians essentially had two taken away from them. I mean, they were offside in the first, you had a goalie interference in the second, but... Well, here's something interesting as well, just going to what you said about, you know, the Sharks coming to play. And as we talked about this being the most exciting game of the of the week, right, is, you know, the Sharks had four goals this uh, in this game. Uh, three of them, three of them were against Montreal's top line, which is a pretty good top line, mm-hmm. you know, Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield and, uh, Kirby doc. So no, they're very much the, like the sharks in that they have one line. Right. But the fact, the fact that the sharks did, you know, 75% of their damage against Montreal's best forwards. Like to me, again, if you're asking me this question six days ago, I'm like, man, like the Sharks have kind of, you know, they're they're getting a little bit of momentum. You know, maybe they'll have a good week here, you know? Uh, we were all filled with hope. <laughs> and then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, and then Montreal, when you looked at the uh, the stat line afterwards, it's like if you saw Vlasic getting that much time on the power play, it's either really good news or really bad news. Yeah. so It's nowhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Then the Sharks head to Toronto. Aaron Dell, the world's okayest goalie, gets his first Shark start this season against a team he was actually signed to but never played for. And the Leafs came in on a 7-0-2 record over their previous nine. So that's kind of why I was juiced to see that after two periods it's tied. Again, the Sharks played the night before, so I was kind of like, God damn, I'm I'm pretty impressed. And... Uh, you know, I think Nieto was involved. <laughs> and here's a question I want to ask. Um, how are there that many empty seats? Seven minutes left in the third. It's a tie game. Your team, you know, the Maple Leafs are doing well. They're on a tear. Mitch Marner is going for a record that uh, held by Daryl Sittler and I forget the other cat. But Eddie Olchek. There you go. Uh but and and I saw a ton of empty seats. I didn't I didn't understand that at all. Well, Maple Leafs tickets are stupid expensive, which might have something to do with it. Yeah, still though, I mean that's it's all they got in Toronto. So um, save up, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I did feel like Chichek had a really good game against Toronto. Like I was thinking, like fuck, this guy might be playing somebody out of a job once Ferraro comes back. Maybe he'll play Ferraro out of a job. I was like, can you play Benning out of a job, please? I don't know. (laughs) Um, But the Sharks came up with a huge 
third period PK, but it was Hurdle with a blind turnover in the neutral zone that would lead to the Leafs scoring. Marner would get that empty netter for his 18th straight game with a point. He did eventually also score in his 19th. Uh, social media fans who were praising Benning after the first game absolutely dragged him after this one. Quite the difference. But uh, you got to give it up for Hurdle. He uh, he owned it, man. He owned it. Yeah, you know, it's all on me. You know, I, I cost us two points because I make a stupid play. And and I feel really bad right now because, you know, I think we played a pretty good game after back-to-back. Guys kill huge PK and, and I fucked up. Can you just talk about, I guess, what you were seeing on that play? Yeah, when I got it, I knew Timo was there. I thought so he's all alone, but the, the guy was there and I make a terrible play and then I close the goal and, and just can, can happen, you know, three minutes left to the game. And I'm, you know, really pissed because we should should be fighting for the points and we have nothing because, you know, I make a terrible play. I mean, you got to give it up to Hertz. He, he, he owned it. He, you know, he said, totally. he said, I fucked up. You know, that hurdle pass essentially stole the game from Dell. And, uh, you know, it is, like, <laughs> as they say, it is what it is. But give it up for Hurdle. He owned it. And in the next game, what did Hurdle do? Put up two goals. Yeah. You know, four goals, I mean, four goals this week. Well, and, and the big thing, and, and it's definitely such a, it's, it's definitely a cliche, right? But like, you know, what's, you know, the, the NHL, like one of the big things with the NHL is like, when you do something like that, make a mistake or you face adversity or anything like that, right? The big question is, how do you respond? Mm-hmm. Right. And to respond with two goals, like to me, like I don't, I mean, the only way I guess it would have been even better is if Hurdle got the hat trick in that game. But again, right, it goes back to and wait, being. And how close was he? Because those first two Hurdle goals came pretty goddamn early in that game. Right. And, and, and as I say, you know, how, okay, so you do a bad, you know, you make a bad play and it costs your team the game, right? How do you respond? How do you, what, you know, how do you react, right? And and I think in that moment, right, in the game against Ottawa, despite the loss, you know, I think Hurdle kind of showed like, hey, I'm the I'm one of the best players on this team. I'm one of the leaders on this team. And I need to own what I did wrong. And I think he did. And I think it was a perfect response. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, Hurdle did kind of factor into being kind of a story this week. <laughs> so that, you know, the Sharks are off for two days. They again, uh, you know, go in to play the Senators who had played in New York the night before. So you had to think like, you've been off for two days. They played in New York the night before, like take advantage of this situation. And again, Hurdle atones to open scoring on the power play. But then Kachuk would answer with his own power play goal. Uh, you know, and that was on a Lin Lindblom penalty, and I'm, uh, <laughs> dude, I'm still wondering why he's still here aside from tonight's goal. Um, but Hurdle had a great tic tac toe score from LeBanc and EK65. This is a game, unfortunately, though, that Gregor went to the room. It's probably why he didn't play tonight because he blocked a shot with 6:30 left in the first. He did return, but I think it. I think we can kind of tell, you know, read the tea leaves that that is probably a large reason why. Gregor did not play tonight. Um, I mean, dude, I hope. Yeah, exactly. But this is the one. Like, if if he could, and I hate to beat a dead horse, but like if he's healthy, he should be playing. You know, absolutely. But uh, dude, this was the one. If if you thought Benning was bad against Toronto, holy shit, dude! <laughs> I mean, dude, dude, that was a hell of a pass. What are you talking about, <laughs> dude? Right into the slot. No one's there. Stutz is like, thank you. <laughs> well, and it's just. I mean, again, it's easy for us to comment on it because we are not there. We didn't do it, right? Yeah, but, but it's you like don't throw it into the slot. No, but like that's that. but that's what I'm saying. That like like kids don't do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, like youth hockey, they teach that out of you. You know? <laughs> Dude, the Sharks hadn't given up a three power play goal since February of 2021 versus you guessed it, the Vegas Golden Knights. Um. Yeah, wasn't a great game for LeBanc. Uh, frustration definitely set in in the back half of the third. Um, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, but this felt like the first game of this season where I'm watching them, and I felt like these they're they're quitting, like they're done. They're they're not taking the extra stride. It was just, ugh. 
<laughs> like, like you know that's, that noise is the perfect descriptor for... <laughs> dude, that's what it just ugh. um and then you know the sh- dude the sharks couldn't score on a four and two and a half for fuck's sakes and right. then to add insult to injury holy shit with like not a lot of time left but i mean still it's it's four to two maybe you can try to manufacture something but the refs dude hurdle is kind of a story this week chief is tripped i don't even here drew can say it better than i can forsberg made a big save right there sure did but comes out and now That's a missed call by the referee, Randy. That was a trip. David Quinn's furious, and he should be. The referees, they saw it. They just ignored that. They just ignored that. They know, and the Sharks are up furious. That right there is a trip. Stutzler drew a penalty in the second that was way less than that. And then Claude Giroux just walks in and drills it. That is not good by the referees right there. They just saw it, and they ignored the call. Unbelievable, dude! <laughs> Just completely yeah. ignoring it. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to get on the referees, but that was like, especially oh, so egregious. The, the way, uh, very agree. I mean, regardless of the of the situation of the game, right? Just extremely egregious play. And then you factor in, yes, the Sharks are losing, but at that moment they were buzzing and they were pushing, you know, to have a chance in that game. And so for it all to kind of blow up on a really missed call, obviously. Look, bottom line is the Sharks are probably going to lose that game anyway, but sure. it's but it's just it's it's really obnoxious that there was something, right? Something that just really kind of screwed everything up, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, like it, I don't it, I don't, it was I don't I don't care if if you're down 10 goals or two. That's it, you call that. Yeah, it's it's that is not uh, discretionary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dear, dear Lord, like, uh, I, I, like, I'm hoping, that, you know, somebody got read the riot act for that. But I mean, no, geez. because the, and and again, I did it last week, and I'm going to do it again this week to my to <laughs> my it. best friend who to my best friend who went through the training. I'm sorry, this is not directed at you, but the referees and the linesmen are fucking handheld through everything, and they are shielded like a whatever the most luxurious treasure in the world you can come up with. (laughs) Like there is a massive shield around them that is keeps out all the criticism, any negativity, any kind of anything I would bet money. I can't, I'm not going to tell you how much money, but I would bet money that there were zero conversations about that play. (sighs) Such, such bullshit. So, uh, I mean, okay, we can take, let, we're not always trying to look to shit on everything, so I can take one positive from this game. It was nice to see Jamie Baker on the broadcast. Hell yeah. Love Jamie Baker. Dude. One that, of the greatest dudes ever. That was fantastic. Uh, I actually makes me have wanna, two take- it make, Makes me want them to play Ottawa, you know, 10 times a season. Go ahead. Well, you, you said you have a takeaway. I See, the other thing, aside from seeing Jamie Baker, again, really awesome to see that he's, like, doing well and thriving and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. I was just... Like, and I know I've made this joke in the past, but I honestly mean it. Like, I was really happy that this game, like, ended. <laughs> Just because, like, you know, you we know, again, we've said it all year. Like, the Sharks are a bad team. They're going to lose more than they win. We know all of these things. But again, as we talked about a couple minutes ago, to see a possibility of coming back taken away from something as, like, kind of ridiculous is that missed trip it was like i was like and again i don't i don't like to beak the officials but i was just like disgusted i'm i honestly as soon as jeru scored that goal i turned it off i was like i don't need to see how it ends you know yeah like <laughs> Our buddy. And, and on top the, but you know what the to jeru's credit kind of the the little you know tongue in cheek cherry on top was the slap shot from the shot to the slot yeah like, that was that was that was that kinda. was little bit a of B, little bit of bde up in there 
yeah, as somebody who kind of enjoys the cheekiness of of things, I appreciated that. Oh, as dude. much as I didn't like how it happened, you know, I appreciated the cheekiness of it. Yeah. But I mean, again, sharks are off for two days. Sens played in New York the night before. Sometimes or somehow it comes down to penalties, special teams. Sharks took a lot of bad penalties, a couple holding calls. You had LeBanc with two trips. Um, and the story of this one for me was, you know, the number one penalty kill in the league just went absolutely MIA and post game couture talked about the PK and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not good. Uh, well, I didn't win any face offs when you start without the puck, I'm going to give the other team a power play that, uh, that's not a recipe for success. So, uh, it starts there and then, uh, some of their their sets, we knew what they were going to do, and we just didn't cover it properly. And some nights that's the way it goes. So yeah, I guess some nights that's the way it goes. Whatever. But the really funny thing though is that somebody, I believe, from the Ottawa media asked him if the game was uh, was like hectic, and uh, Couture was a little cute with the media on this one. Seems like one of the more hectic games of this season. Were they just getting more bounces, or were they handling that kind of game a little better? Have you watched us play this year? Have you watched us play? Hectic? It's not usually a clean up and down game. We, that's the way we play. Where uh, things happen, it's a hockey game. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of offensive chances both ways, and they're a good team. I think we're a pretty good team, obviously. Or, when the lost column isn't where we want it to be, but uh, two good teams with some creative players. <laughs> I love that, dude. Have, have you watched us play this year? <laughs> <laughs> We're not good. <laughs> I mean, I think our record shows you that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, finally, Quinn talked about Couture mentioning that the Sharks are, again, finding ways to lose. I agree wholeheartedly. You've probably heard that a hundred times from from myself and a few other people and uh, you know it's a different thing every night it seems like you know we cure one problem and another one pops up so you know we've got to we got to recover and uh, we got a game tomorrow night and we've got a chance to finish our road trip at 500 <laughs> got a chance to finish at 500 and then what happened <laughs> <sighs> you know what though i do like when he said um when he said that uh, you know, you've probably heard this a hundred times. Like I, I found that to be quite relatable because I, I don't know how about you, but I feel, you know, how many, what, how many shows have we have we done up in the season right now? Is this our eighth show this season? Ninth, seventh? I don't know. But sure. Point point <laughs> is somewhere in that ballpark. Point is, I I feel like I've repeated myself quite a bit with with negative things about this team, but it's all relevant. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, which is, I, I don't know if that makes it worse or makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just not a great week. And again, you had so many chances to kind of do something, turn, try to turn this season around. It was, it was laid out there for you. And like I said, three of four game or three of four teams losing record in just unable to put it together. So I guess my question then it's, it's another losing week. When do the Sharks wave the white flag? I mean, we're a third of the way into the season. And at this point last season, the Sharks had a far better record. And it feels like, you know, the, the is this team, they're like one key injury away from the lottery or a one unexpected hot streak away from a middle of the pack finish. Uh, is Greer biding his time? Is he waiting for the right offer to come along? Do you think he should be more proactive in lightening this roster? I mean, what a third of the way in, they are what they are. It, I'm not seeing a lot of signs of this getting better. What would you like to see Greer do at this point? I mean, I get what you're saying, you know, like when do they wave the white flag, right? But again, if they, if they wave the white flag now or, uh, you know, at the March 3rd trade deadline or anywhere in the middle, right? The outcome's the same, you know? So I think my opinion, and maybe some people disagree with this, but my opinion is you're better off, you know, quote unquote, staying in the hunt as long as you can, right? In the hopes that maybe some of the players that you want to trade away uh, come trade deadline, Nick Benino comes to mind, James Reimer comes to mind. You give them an opportunity to kind of 
rehab their image, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, again, like with, like, again, in Matt Nieto, right? Like, you know, there's been a lot of negativity said about him. I would say mostly from me and that's fine. I'm willing to <laughs> acknowledge when I, you know, need to take a step back, but like the only thing, you know, I, I know people are going to say, Oh my God, like we need to trade these guys and, and, and the season's lost and all this kind of stuff. But you know, let these guys keep piling up the points and kind of rehabbing their image. I mean, it only helps you uh, on the trade front. Right. And again, you know, you wave the white flag now or you wave it in three months. I mean, it's not going to change the outcome. You think Le- LeBanc might be involved in some of those conversations? Um, With one year left after this? I could I could see that. I mean, again, it kind of, you know, if I were to take the sort of mindset that I have on Timo Meyer and I were to apply that to LeBanc, I think it's kind of the same thing where, you know, if you think this is a four or five year plan, you know, LeBanc doesn't, you know, LeBanc obviously is not going to, be a fixture of that plan. And so, you know, similar to what the Sharks did with Barkley Goodrow a couple of years ago, why not maximize your value and trade a player away when they have multiple years left, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um, and, and LeBanc tonight had a wicked snipe. I mean, kids got a good shot. It's just finding that yeah. time to take it, you know? Well, and, well, and like we've talked about, right? I, I think we have spent far too long talking about it this season, but, you know, there we've seen... Every game, like when LeBanc, and we talked about it last season as well, when LeBanc's in the right position, he's a really good player. You know, as I mentioned, he was point per game this week. He had a goal and three assists in four games. And he's, uh, you know, he's got 15 points in 27 games, which again, like we've been talking about, you maybe want that sort of point per game percentage. You maybe want that a little bit higher for how high he is in the lineup and what he's getting paid. But I don't know. The last thing that LeBanc is, is like some slacker, you know, LeBanc, I would argue is pulling his weight this year. And, Mm -hmm. you know, again, if you're, if you're on the two year plan, maybe that makes him part of the two year plan. And if you're on the five year plan, maybe that helps you move on from him quicker and maximize your value. And, and dude, chief tonight, high value goal. (laughs) Maduel. Yeah, he did. Yeah. uh, You're correct. And it was on the power play too. So you get a little, you get a bonus point for that. Right. The jerk Um, bump, if you will. Yeah. 80% of his goals this year are high value. So, I mean, if the goal of this is to make the playoffs, Bordalo has as many goals as seven Sharks forwards combined. Different leagues, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but it does make you wonder, but if they, if they're not making the call up now, don't expect it. Unless no, as, uh, unless there's I mean, an injury. Well, exactly. I mean, that's what we've been saying all along. Like, again, whether the Sharks are good, bad, ugly, whatever, <laughs> the bottom line is there's 14 forwards on the roster. Okay. Let me right? ask. Like, yes, but let me ask you this. And I, I saw Burge in the uh, in the chat. Hope you got your giveaway win uh, that shipped out last week. Burge, can you confirm that you received your your lunchbox? Uh, but Burge asked at one point. Can we flip Barabanov for a first round draft pick? He has a nice cap, ha, ca, uh, nice cap hit. Is on pace for fifty seven points, while Goodrow was on pace for thirty two points in twenty twenty, and we got a first for him. Yeah, I think uh, again, and, and I think we've had this conversation many times before. But you know, value like what somebody's worth, right? Like it's all very subjective. Like I, I think there were a lot of teams who. I think there were a lot of teams in, you know, in 2020, uh, 2020, yeah, 2020, who looked at Barkley Goodrow and they're like, yeah, you know, he's a good player. Uh, you know, I'll give you a third for him. Right. And then Tampa Bay says, no, 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 we need this guy. Here's a first round pick. And what did they do? They won two cups. So it's all kind of subjective. So I think would a majority of the teams in the league give up a first for Barabanov? I, I'm not super confident in that, but would someone? Sure. You know, would and again, wouldn't it be like funny if it was Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot, you know, that you kind of have to take into consideration, right? And I know AJ is going to talk about my favorite player on the Sharks, which is cap space. Like, just take a look. Like, you know, we've especially with the pandemic and the way everything has happened with the salary cap, and Tampa Bay has actually been a really good example of doing of operating this way. You you need contributions from guys who aren't making a lot of money, right? 
And so you look at Barabanov, who, as we've been talking about for a couple weeks, he didn't have a training camp and he started the season late and he's fifth on the team in scoring. He's on pace for a career year. You know, like there's a lot of things that are in there are a lot of things that are in Barabanov's favor. And so if you're a team, I mean, just to go down the list, right, if you're the Tampa Bay Lightning who lost Andre Palat, right, if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs who lost um, who lost Zach Hyman, if you're the Vegas Golden Knights who lost Max Pacioretty. And again, Barabanov, I'm not here to tell you that he's like any of those three players, but those three teams that I mentioned, Tampa Bay, Toronto, Vegas, they could use a guy like Barabanov, somebody that you can put in your top six and they're kind of insulated a little bit with better players. I mean, we've talked, especially the last couple of weeks, we've talked about how Barabanov is much more, he's much more of an assist guy. You know, he's not, he's not someone that you're going to rely on for goals. He's the guy who passes the puck. Picture, let's just say for argument's sake, picture Barabanov with Steven Stamkos, Ooh. you know, like somebody who scores a lot of goals, or even if you want to go to Vegas, right? Picture Barabanov with, oh, you, you know, Jack Eichel and Mark Stone. Picture Barabanov with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, right? Like yeah, Toronto, you, baby. Right. And, and and there's so many other teams that you could even look at it. Well, I mean, I think, you know, the New Jersey Devils, I think, could be in that conversation. I think the Pittsburgh Penguins could be in that conversation. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets. Like, there's so many teams because it's – it's all about balance, right? Like you look at Barabon of really good passing a player, really good at passing and generating offense and racking up assists. It makes logical sense to put a player like that with somebody who's notorious for scoring goals, which is why I think he thrived so well with Timo Meyer and Tomas Hurdle last year, who both score a lot of goals, you know, I know. Well, that was it, a very long winded answer, but I guess <laughs> to shorten it, Yes, I think it's possible. I don't think a majority of the league would do it, but I think someone would well, pay it th first, that is. This transitions nicely into hero in zero of the week, and because my hero of the week is Bear Benoff. Huge. Uh, huge. Six points in seven games. Uh, I think you can make a little argument for Hurdle. I mean, he did own and atone in four goals this week. Uh, I was initially looking at Benning as like the surprise for like a hero of the week. You know, after Montreal, and then every other game happened, and I went, nope, not going to happen. Might be a huge zero now. You know, we bring in the 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 huge, and um, uh, <laughs> oh, let me divert for one moment. Burr says the package is due to arrive tomorrow. Perfect. Um, there was a point in the game against Ottawa where, dude, I, I totally thought, oh, man, this is an opportunity where Drew Remenda should have channeled his inner jerk. To brink it. Waits far side. Kacking in with his best save of the game. Huge. <laughs> Dude, that just would have been so huge. great if, if Remenda just would have went huge. <laughs> uh, and, and you know what? To your point on Barabanov, you mentioned six points in his last seven games. Uh, you know, if he continues at this rate of scoring, which again, no reason to think he won't, right? Mm -hmm. 52 point pace, uh, in 78 games. That's, I don't know. That sounds like a late first. If you ask me, <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, and you know what? I know people are going to pee in their pants. If <laughs> let's just say Vegas trades for Barabanov. But again, if your team tank, hypothetically, don't you want the teams in your division to be better than you? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm so waiting for Anaheim to pick shit. it up, dude. Store Lars and uh, Gibby <laughs> need Honestly, to come through, dude. If if I'm the Sharks, and again, here's the like the big three, right? Obviously, like you know, Nick Benino, uh, Matt Nieto, James Reimer, um, e and again, we I've kind of wondered out loud if Noah Gregor would fall into this conversation, but guys who maybe don't have a place on this team beyond next year. I, I mean, if I'm the Sharks, my first call is to any of the teams in the division. Hey, you want this guy? Like, Cause all it's going to do is push the Sharks down. And obviously, you know, I don't know that I would want to trade Meyer or Barabanov in the division only because it could bite you in the ass down the road, but for like a one year kind of run to the playoffs, like who cares? Right. Hey, now. Uh, I'm seeing Pichelka tweeting some quotes. They just outplayed us for the five minutes. 
Can you be more specific as to what five minutes you're talking about? Uh, they wanted it more than us. No, that's a bad quote. Dude, dude, that's horrible. This is another night of penalties and another poor second period. Dude, I am so tired of how horrible this team is in the second period. Like, their goal differential right now is dash nine. But <laughs> it's 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 actually just as bad in the third. Also. Or no, I'm sorry. It's worse in the third. It's dash eleven. <laughs> now, obviously, you gotta you know, it's those numbers are going to be skewed because they've given up eight empty netters, so it's a little different. Uh, but yeah, the second period is just atrocious. But uh, getting back to where we were, Barabanov, my hero, and uh, t- tell the people who yours is for a minute I, I, while I, oh, crap. Okay, here comes Bill. We got to do this before we oh, do anything. Super because chat. Remember, everybody, when you help support the show with the Super Chat option, you go right to the front of the line and you just interrupt and put the brakes on the whole show. We love it. Bill Lockhart, East Coast Sharks boy here. Love listening to you guys on my morning commute. Thanks for all you do. Bill, thank you. Dude, that's so cool. East, back on the East Coast, man. What, uh, hold on, wait a minute. It's like 1030. That seems like a really, it, it's not AM there yet. What are you doing? <laughs> Well, I think I, I think we also tend to be on much later than uh you right now. You're right. Yeah, you right. So and 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 you know and I can relate to that. I mean, there's you well, know sure. I cer- you know I certainly one wouldn't want to like you know listen make an us? appointment. No, not listen to <laughs> us, but just like you know if there was like let's just say like if there was a show you know or whatever that I wanted to watch, like I would I would probably do the same thing. I'd be like you know what I'll record it and I'll catch it when I don't want to go to sleep. You know what I mean? So. I know. And that's and that's a beautiful thing of the internet. Absolutely, Bill. Thank you so much. Shout that's, out to Bill. Yeah, dude, so cool. Uh, Jerkman, your hero of the week. Oh, I did, hero. I did, oh, I wanted to do the audio thing that annoys you, but I turned it off. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, thank you for thinking of me like that. <laughs> uh, so my hero of the week. It's funny. I kind of went through a little bit of an evolution just by watching like watching the games and not doing any research into the stats. Like I was, I was ready to say Kevin LeBanc was my zero of the week, but uh, as I kind of alluded to earlier, like he's actually going to be my hero. And I know the, you know, I know a lot of people are going to want to pull out their pitchforks when I say that, but the bottom line, as I said before, he had four points in four games uh, this week, you know, a goal and three assists, obviously goal on the power play, which is huge. I know AJ loves to talk about how, brutal the Sharks power play is and so anytime they do something notable I think it's obviously good and worth mentioning um you know I think you could look at the stats and you could make a conversation of well you know he was uh you know he was a minus player which I understand but again everybody on the Sharks was bad so you got to find some good from somewhere right and I think that was LeBanc I thought he was really consistent and you know you don't want him Obviously, you want him, of all people, you want him out of the penalty box. I mean, he had, you know, a penalty tonight, two against uh, two against the Ottawa Senators. But I thought he was one of the best players this week. And, you know, whether he's part of the plan or whether he gets traded away, it only in either situation, it only helps the Sharks for him to be a good player. So I just say keep it up. Who did you take? <laughs> LeBanc. There you go. Nice. All right, uh, Tiger coming in hot on the Super Chat. Tiger off the top rope. Dude, love you both. Please keep us sane throughout the season. Hey, we're going to do our best. Uh, bring on the trade deadline and draft. Sell, 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 baby. I feel that. Look at that. Six, do- six Australian dollars. Oh. Wow. The, so we're international. The, uh, the, those, those that start with the C word. Those kind of dollars. Because he loves to use that. And uh, <laughs> in other words, cash, baby, <laughs> not so mid coming in with their hero, Jamie Baker. Absolutely. Yeah. Love Jamie Baker. And we get another one. Jack Olson with the super chat. Thank you so much. Moving West an hour. Love listening from Chicago, Chicago. Nice. Shout out to Jack. I believe, I believe. And if I misspeak, I apologize, but I believe that is one of our regulars in the discord under a different name. Sweet. So we see you. We speak your name. Uh, zero. I'll let you go first because there's uh, so many to choose from. <laughs> right. Well, mine is mine's quite long, so maybe you want to go first. Sure, Lindblom. Okay, sure. That's fair. I mean, dude, third of the season, and he just got his first goal 
tonight. And uh, let's just say that one would be pretty low on the module. <laughs> uh, and this son of a gun is signed for another season. Dude, the return on investment has been horrible. Can we ra- wave this guy in some way, shape, or form? I mean, I'm, I'm here for the story. I'm here for the Lindblom story. But dear God, wasn't this a guy at the beginning of the season that you know was written on a napkin that was like, yeah, this is going to be a top six guy? Like he's on the yeah, fucking I, fourth line, dude. I I know, and I and you know what? I I know. Again, like to your point, he's got one goal, one goal and four assists in twenty seven games. Like I understand um, the frustration. <laughs> yeah, I understand the frustration. I understand the desire to have him on the fourth line because, again, as we've talked about, you're not helping. So why are we gonna put you? in a position where you're playing a lot of minutes, but at the same time, kind of like what I, what we talked about with LeBanc last year and with Balsers and Dolan and all those guys, like, you know, Lindblom, like he, he's no good to you on the fourth line. Right. Like, I would argue that he's not good at all. Right. But what I'm just saying, it's like, you know, if you want him to do something as you're talking about, to do something, anything, Right. Like you need to kind of, you need to, again, putting players in a position to play at their best. I mean, his, um, you know, his ice time with San Jose this year, his average ice time per game, it's down almost four minutes from his career average. And, and so again, you can make a, a very justified argument in saying, well, he hasn't earned the ice time and I respect that. But at the same time, how do you expect a guy to get going when you don't give him a chance, you know? Yeah, I feel you on that, but it's just, good Lord. I mean, and and what's funny is the Sharks kind of have a little bit of a history of giving guys second chances like that. Like, uh, wasn't it Tony Granato had kind mm-hmm. of, you know, a similar story? And, uh, I mean, we all know what happened with Staylock. That, I mean, they could have cut Staylock loose way earlier than they did. Multiple but, times. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely been a couple guys that they've held on to or at least tried to uh, – I don't want to say rehabilitate in as in like reputation, but help get their career back on track. Uh, well, so, so far for me, Lindblom, it's just, oh man, I, uh, again, I'm here for the story, but it's oof, not working. Well, and that's kind of like, you know, that's, I, I think if you ask me, like, like you said, doing the second chance to kind of rehabilitate the image a little bit mm-hmm. to me, that's, that's the smart play, right? I mean, you you see all the time where a player a player will have five good seasons and then f- they'll they'll play five seasons let's just say they'll play five seasons four of them are really good and one is not so good but the one is the most recent one and so their team is like oh this guy sucks we got to get rid of him and so i think you're a smart team and you're a smart gm if you look at the guy and say hey he's coming off a bad year but the previous four were really exceptional let's see if we can't pick him up and do something and i think a good example of that is Barabanov. I mean, we've talked about what the Sharks gave up for Barabanov. Auntie Sue Suomela. Who? Don't know. But going to the question back a couple of minutes ago that Burge put in the chat, if the Sharks could somehow turn around and let's just say they trade Barabanov for a first-round pick, that's taking a chance on a guy and rehabbing the image and profiting from it. Sure. Dig it. Um, who's your zero? I mean, you you seem to have a laundry list. Yeah, and and here's the thing. I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't I don't know who my zero who the person is, but I know they exist. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, it's you, you you've piqued my interest. My zero is whoever instilled this weak ass way of playing into the sharks. Oh, and I and I don't and I don't I, I it's not David Quinn because this has been going on beforehand. I don't know if it's Bob Bugner. I don't know if it's Pete DeBoer. I don't know if it's Doug Wilson. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody, somebody out there. Because and again, we agree we've moved past the age of needing a knuckle dragger on your team, but you need someone who, in a moment that's necessary, you need somebody who's gonna you know you don't need to fight or anything. But the prime example, you know, Nieto getting blown up in the offensive zone, like. If I'm on that team, I'm and if I'm I'm gonna go to the player that hit Nieto and I'm gonna say, hey, clean hit, but we have our eye on you. 
And there was some nonsense with Timo Meyer. There was some nonsense with Eric Carlson. There's been nonsense with the goalies where the other team is taking a little bit of extra chances. I believe it was Kakanen had his glove slashed at a couple games ago. Carlson gets cross-checked. Timo Meyer gets slammed into the boards and nobody does anything. It's just like, oh, you know, okay, whatever. So your your like, no. your zero for the week is the lack of response. It's just who whoever in the my zero is the person that instilled that idea, but it goes so much further than just that. You know, Drew Remenda talked about it as well. Just lack of urgency, lack of intensity, right? Where and and we made the point, I believe it was last year, where the Sharks do a really good job at looking outnumbered when they have the man advantage, whether that's a power play, whether it's an empty net situation. So like they have more players on the ice and they look outnumbered. And I think those two kind of situations, not responding to when some liberties are maybe taken and also not, you know, going into the corner to help out it, help a teammate fish the puck out or, you know, coming off of your point to keep the puck in on a power play or an empty net situation. Just it, it feels, and I don't, I don't want to go as far to say that the locker room is fractured or anything. I think that's kind of a bunch of, that's kind of a BS talking point if you ask me, but it doesn't feel like, it it doesn't feel like at times that players are going, you know, that extra step to kind of help a teammate out in the game when it's ultimately necessary. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so to put a bow on it, my zero for this week, and I pick this week because I think we saw it a lot through these four games. My zero is whoever instilled that mindset into the Sharks. I mean, it goes back to. Um, I believe I don't remember who it was a couple years ago that got blown up. I think it was Barabanov that got blown up and what was the response? It was against Vegas in the hub season. I believe it was Barbanov that got blown up. Nobody did anything. You can say that about a lot of different plays. I right. mean, this and, is and not, I, this is not been, you know, this is not something that is new. I mean, we, I remember us talking about this back when, you know, like Kane was on the team. Didn't he get like blown up by, um, Oh, who's that, that huge, who's that tree that used to play for Boston? Chara. Yeah, he got like blown up by Chara. He was expecting the team to respond. Nobody did. So then Kane turned around and lost his shit on Chara and, you know, and got, I'm not sure if he got ejected from the game, but I know he definitely, you know, caught, I think he might have gotten a, a misconduct in that one, but he was yeah. pissed. And then I remember and- during that same season, Carlson uh, got lit up by somebody and there was just a lack of response. And that's, you know, that was one of the things I was talking about where these guys perhaps, I mean, just based on that behavior, maybe they haven't ingratiated themselves to the team like somebody say a Pavelski. Sure. And I and, and I, I get what you're saying. But again, like regardless of your personal feelings about somebody like, dude, like, I'll be honest, I don't really like you, but we're co-hosts. And so I'll step up for you if I have to. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Completely just agree. But no, but let's just say let's, I respect for argument's that. Sake, but for argument's sake, like let's say I was like, you know what, AJ's not my favorite guy, but we're co-hosts. I'm gonna go to bat for him. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, same, dude, it's you were in town. Thing. You were in town last week. I saw you for all of three minutes. No, <laughs> well, believe I'm, me, I'm a, dude, dude. Message received. I'm a busy man. I'm um, saying it. <laughs> but uh, but you know what I mean. Like you said, there that lack of response, like it's a problem. And if the Sharks, you know, if they have delusions of being a good team, being a playoff team, being a Stanley Cup team, whatever, like you have to sort of get in the foxhole with your guys, right? Yeah, this team and, does you know, not circle the wagons well. Right, and I want to say, I believe, I, I can't, it was recently, I might have been against the Kraken, I don't remember, but there was a game very recently where Capo Kakinen got slashed on the glove. And I'm like looking and I'm like, nobody's going to do anything? Right. Like your starting goalie is injured, your backup is doing their damnedest to keep you in it. Like... You know, and again, I met, you know, I, Eric Carlson, I believe, got cross checked in front of the net and Timo Meyer got shoved into the boards like all recently and nothing, no response. And, and you don't need to beat the wheels off of somebody. But again, you go up, you say, hey, knock it off or I'm going to punch you in the side of the head. And then that's it. You just move on. Well, and there's there's only so many, you know, Ryan Reeves, Tom Wilson's, you know, there's only so many of those kinds of players in the league. Sure, but it doesn't even need to be that. I mean, we've seen like we saw one was like. Well, at the very least, you want to see Stone. Well, you want to see Couture getting somebody's grill. You know, you want to see the captain step up. Exactly, and I and they going back that game two years ago. Like I said, Hurdle thought Hurdle fought Mark Stone, and at the moment, I thought it was a really stupid time to fight when you're losing and you're the team's best player. But at the same time, I respected that sort of like, hey, 
he's tired of the bullshit and he's standing up for himself. But why? You know? Because nobody else is, right? Yeah, exactly. And again, you don't have to fight somebody. You just have to be intimidating enough to get in their face. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's gone are the days of the, uh, you know. Ryan Clo. That's a prime example. Ryan Clo, dude, Brian Marchment. Right. But uh, like, even Owen Nolan. I mean, you talk about a superstar that did not take shit from anybody. No, and that's what, and I think that's a good Owen Nolan and Ryan Clo specifically. Like you said, superstar, 20 goal guys, 50 point guys. And they'll get in your face if they have to. They're going to run you over if they have to. They'll tap you on the laces and say, hey, quit fooling around or I'm going to punch you. You know? Yeah. But unfortunately, you've got guys like uh, March or so who, you know, they feel that little tap on the foot and they go down like they were snipered. Right. And and again, you just you just have to be. You know, intimidating enough. You have the windshield, not the buck. Yeah, you have to care. <laughs> you have to care enough to stand up for yourself. And case in point, you remember, I know a couple of years ago, remember Max Pacioretty clipped Couture and it was really ugly. And Couture is like, no, that's bullshit. I'm going to go beat this guy up. Yeah. But see, but I also remember, uh, God, I, I'm pretty sure it was a season opener against Los Angeles. I think Dustin Brown got a hell of a shot on Couture pretty early in the game. No, mm-hmm. res- no response. So. Yeah, I'm right there well, with then, you. This this team, yeah, they they just I don't know. Like, when was the last time you saw them come together? And I I'm not I'm not whipping it out, dude. I'm not doing the stroke. <laughs> but I mean that you know was one of the times where they circled the wagons for a guy. Right. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. And should we put on your <laughs> should we put on your T-shirt? Did somebody say game seven? Do we have to put on your T-shirt? Oh, wrong shirt. It's in here somewhere. No. I change very fast. Dude, where did you put it in your closet? Dude, what happened? Oh, that was one of my favorite t-shirts all the time, though, of course, was the Balsers. <laughs> but, oh, there it is. There it is. Somebody game, say game seven? But, like, uh, and again, like... Who doesn't like a you, wank? Right. But, but again, it's also about having spatial awareness, right? If you're, say you're on the team and again, whatever, whatever your feelings are on players, right? Like Eric Carlson is making, is, is making things go this year, right? He's dragging the sharks, kicking and God, screaming. Imagine where this team would be without him. Exactly. What, what are and they, so, where, where are they at? Eight and 16, eight, 16 and four, dude. I, I think you could probably throw at least three of those wins completely on Carlson's shoulders. Yeah. I mean, well, <sighs> uh, again, he's got two overtime goals this year. So right there. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, uh. But, but again, like if I'm on this team and I, and like Eric Carlson, he's making us go, he's bringing us along. If I, if somebody taps Eric Carlson, like I said, cross check in the back by the front of the net. I'm sure I'm not going to go fight the guy who did it because I think it's unnecessary, but I'll go, you know, you do the normal things slash on the laces. Hey, quit screwing around. I'm going to grab you by the Jersey and I'm going to look tough, but I'm going to look tough and not do anything. But (sighs) it's, it's that element of, Hey, quit screwing around with our players. You know, I get it. This guy's our meal ticket. Dude, this is the longest hero zero segment we've ever done. We have to move on. It's important, dude, because this has been an (laughs) issue. It's been, it's been an issue and you know, Maybe there's Since a game seven. Here. No, but, but we can, but we can all do our homework and come back about it next Sunday. But this has been an issue since the Sharks have not been a playoff team. True story. True story. So I, I think it's very relevant. Am I allowed to move on though? Uh, yeah, if you must. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to a couple of quick hits. Um, the Sharks, the, yeah, the Sharks uh, sending out a lot of marketing materials. Or, or I should say marketing surveys, kind of, you know, trying to take the temperature of the fan base. So I, I wanted to ask the people that are, you know, checking us out right now live. I see that uh, we're over 50 at this point, uh, bordering on 60. I want to know, aside from winning, which is obviously the primary mover of tickets for any event, uh, what is getting you into the tank this season? Or what's keeping you out of it? You know, is it ticket prices? Is it food and bev prices? Is it parking? The in-game experience, you know, like, do you love the pre-game pre- presentation? Do you hate the music? Do you like the contests? Do you hate the, you know, uh, what's her name? Emily. 
You know, like, what is it? I mean, am I forgetting anything? Should they, you know what? Maybe this is something that the Sharks kind of suck at that I'd like to see them do a little bit better. But I was watching um, some game. <laughs> I can't remember who the hell. Oh, it was the Kraken. Yeah, I was watching that, though. Yeah, and we're going to get into that ridiculous Kraken Kings game in a little bit. But I was watching the Kraken Kings. And what does the Kraken do? They put up a, a you know, a uh, a graphic that says the upcoming the upcoming Kraken homestand. Now we've seen the Sharks do this, where they said, "Here are the teams that are coming in," but that's all they do. They said, "Here's the date," and it literally says Vancouver, Anaheim, Arizona, whatever. Whereas the Kraken, they sit here and they go, "Capitals are coming." Who's their guy? Ovechkin. And he's got 793 career goals and most road goals of all time. And after that, it's going to be Matthew Kachuk, who has a ridiculous amount of points. And then after that, it's going to be Nick Suzuki, who has 24 points in 22 games in his first year as captain of the Canadiens. So my point being, like, the Sharks could probably take a, a page out of that and say, just admit, if we're going to suck, maybe a way to get people to the tank is to, um, you know, you have to do it, promote the superstars that are coming to visit. I mean, does that not sound like something that you could do? <laughs> no, I, I, I think that's a perfect, like, that's to me, that's like a perfect way to get people in the door. Because again, you've seen, and I, I've definitely done this. I know a lot of people have done this, right? Where, People will buy tickets to games to see, you know, to kind of see what the hot sort of, you know, the hot item in town is, you know, whether that's a player, whether it's a, a team that's playing really well, whether it's a moment, you know, anything like that. Right. And, you know, the 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 example, the example that I would kind of give is so I one have, of the, I have one, a perfect example. Yeah. Well, so so one of the first games, one of the first games that I first hockey games that I went to. um you know, it was in 2006. It was the second game I ever went to. And yes. Now, does it have a lot to do with the fact that this game was on my birthday? Yes, that has a lot to do with it. <laughs> but again, you know, my, you know, my dad took me to the game and, and uh, my, his rationale was, hey, Jonathan Chichu, remember that guy? Jonathan Chichu is Richard on, winner, Jonathan Chichu. Who won the Richard that season, I might add. I know. My dad's rationale, yes, it was on my birthday, but at the same time, my dad wanted to take me to a game. You know, his his rationale was <laughs> Jonathan Chichu is on a historical, unprecedented in Sharks history goal scoring pace. Well, dude, that I season want, your want, your chances of witnessing a Chichu hat trick were better than not. Yeah, he had five hat tricks that year. <laughs> That's what and, I'm saying. And so, and again, so my dad's rationale was, yes, this game is on your birthday, and yes, it's a random game, but He's having a historical season for the Sharks. I want you to at least have been able to witness that history in person and have the opportunity to see something exciting. Well, see, I'll, I'll tell you the as an example, and I want to point out what Jesse mentioned in the chat. is said, overthinking this, but maybe this is an NBC versus Root thing because, you know, Root is the regional sports network for the Kraken, and that's a great yes, point. Yes, it is a great point, but NBC... <laughs> is the state media for the Sharks. Th that, but I would also point out that sometimes NBC, I don't know who the interns are that are doing some of the work. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe Root just has better people, but uh, the last night, I believe, yeah, last night during the Ottawa game, they have Hedekin do a hit during the second intermission, and when they threw up the, the lower third graphic, it said Randy Hahn, Drew Remenda even though it was Randy and Brett. So, you know, the NBC guys have proven, at least the people kind of doing graphics and shit in the background, they're not always on top of their game. So maybe that's part of it. But I will tell you, the perfect example of this was the last time the Sharks hosted Vegas. That was the game that Phil Kessel was going to break the Iron Man streak. I didn't hear shit about that until the actual day of like how do you not promote that because that game was like on a tuesday so how do you not promote that you know like come be part of history 
And right, to, exactly. To, to, and here, and to even take this a step further, I bought two warm up pucks from that night and sold both of them for a hundred dollars each. Nice. People enjoy history, right? You know, that's <laughs> some me, of us th- studying in school, <laughs> right? But that's me taking advantage of the situation, just like. <laughs> People were buying warm-up pucks when Marlowe broke the record in Vegas for games played. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you saw pucks for that going on for, you know, for ridiculous amounts of money. But my point being is that if you know that there's going to be something historic that's going to happen, why not promote the shit out of it? You already know when, you know, uh, it, it's like when they hand out the, uh, the silver stick, when they know it's going to be somebody's thousandth game. How do you not do more to promote that? So anyway, that's, you know, that's kind of my take on that. Uh, either way, like if, if <laughs> like sharks, you want to take a temperature of the fan base? We'll, we're more than happy to give you honest takes if you're willing to listen. You know, like don't, don't hate us because we're honest. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Like you, you want to be better? Listen to the people who your product is for, right? Sure that. Uh you know. Let's move on. Uh, Couture did kind of call out the media during the pregame media session <laughs> prior to the Leafs game because we, as we've talked about, we've kind of mocked and made fun of that a benign question about Eric Carlson, you know, to towards Mike Greer turned into content for 189 different, you know, websites, podcasts, whatever. Uh, when asked about all the trade rumors, Logan said, Dude, that's just the media trying to fill time and space, which is, you know, it's damn right. It's funny when you look at all those articles and pods that were posted that week, and then the following week it's trading Timo and, you know, or it's moving Reimer, moving Carlson. And hey, dude, we're guilty of it, man. Good on you, Logan, for calling everybody out. Because, I mean, Dude, look at the last two uh, shows in the title that of the Pucknologist. The for last week was trading Meyer. The week before that, trading Carlson. Hey, we're not above it, people. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you this though EK65 did a hit with Sportsnet last night during the Ottawa game what do you take away from these comments he made with Friedman because uh, I'm just going to say EK can be I don't know shifty isn't the word maybe cryptic but you tell me listen to this what do you, what do you want like I mean you're the guy who has control here what, what's your preference I want to win. That's uh, that's why I uh, started playing this sport when I was a little kid. Uh, I used to cry after every loss. I don't do that anymore. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's what I want. And uh, you know, when you're younger, uh, you know, you think you got all the time in the world, and and uh, you don't realize how fast time goes. And uh, you know, I hope that uh, I get the chance to uh, at least uh, you know have a chance at it again. And uh, you know, hopefully it's here. You. I got lots of years left in me, guys. Yes, you <laughs> absolutely. Yes, you does. Take care. absolutely. Now you're negotiating. Alex is going to be all over that. Uh, I don't know about you. I mean, I got lots of years left in me. I just want to win. Hmm. I don't see a problem with that. I mean, it, it, it's the same thing with Timo Meyer, right? Do oh. you believe in? Do you believe in the group, right? Do you believe in? You know. Do you, do you believe in the plan, right? Because again, and I know everybody's been sort of marrying Carlson to the Ottawa Senators for some fantastical reunion, right? But again, is Ottawa better than the Sharks? No, not this year anyway, right? And so, if he goes back to Ottawa, Atala. it's not like he's going. To, it's not like he's going to a Stanley Cup contender. It's not like Vegas is trading for him. Like, <laughs> and I agree with Ian. I see you put the comment up, like. It's a nothing comment. I mean, what it is, it's the truth. What it is. I, you know, if if like if he had come on there and if he had said, oh, you know what, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, be able to put on skates every day. Like if he had given you that bullshit, we would have called it as such, you know? I don't know. I just. I don't hmm. see it as a thing. All right. Okay. And that's fine. I, I saw it. I, I just kind of looked, you know, I want to win and, you know, and. And it, Ma, it, Ma, Ma's also pointing out that, you know, he did say, hopefully it's here at the end. So, like, obviously, it's not like he's like, trade me right fucking now. You no, know no, I mean? no. But I, but I like, it's, it's, hopefully it's here. But, you know, but it almost kind of like, yeah, I want to win. Hopefully it's here. But if I can't win here, I'm going somewhere else. You know, that's, you know, it's kind of how you can read into it because 
hello that's, sure that's the fun part that's the you know that's why the the benign question to mike greer turns into content for a week right but you know but at the same time to sort of be the contrarian that mindset you know who has that mindset everybody, everybody. yeah like i think um I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, I, I, I hate to do it because I know he's your friend, but... <laughs> Fuck you. Joe Pavelski would have oh, re-signed okay. here. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, love Pavelski. He's my buddy. <laughs> Joe Pavelski would have re-signed here if he thought the Sharks were going to win. I mean, I know the third year was a part of it, but again, if you think the team has a legitimate chance at winning... Oh, I see. I totally disagree with you. I, you I, go, I go back to all those... Um, j- Listening to everything, reading everything, no, no, no. I, it was Wilson would not give him that third year. No, and I understand that's a. I understand that that's the reason why. I mean, we've talked about, we've been talking about that for almost five years now, and I agree with you. That's the reason why. But what I'm more saying is, I feel like if if Pavelski thought the Sharks had a legitimate chance at winning the Stanley Cup in 2020, I kind of feel like it would have been much easier to sort of smooth over the no third year holdup. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's not how I read it. I, I no, read it, but I, it no, really no, no. came not, down to that. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that that's what it was. I'm just saying that that's... It was. I'm just saying that that's a thing. You know, like if, hey, I know you want the third year, but we're really close to winning. Oh, well, you know what? If you are going to win, maybe I don't need the third year right now. Hmm. You know? I don't know. We'll... we'll... It's a thought experiment. Yeah, we can go on. Uh, let's see. Let's go on to uh, what's going on around the NHL. Well, I should say more about the division because this is what it is. Hey, remember when the uh, Coyotes were in the division? Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> things are seem to be progressing for the new barn for the Coyotes. Evidently, there was a council meeting in Tempe. Uh, the vote is expected on the Coyotes' new arena and entertainment district, and Gary Bettman showed up says the team is willing to sign a 30-year non-relocation agreement. Uh, also oh. says the league will bring a draft or all-star game to Tempe. Okay, that's great. And we'll get to that in a second. I want to finish these tweets from Chris Johnston. Uh, with Gary Bettman and Bill Daly in attendance, Tem- Tempe City Council voted unanimously in favor of approving the Arizona Coyotes' proposed arena and entertainment district the project will now be put to a referendum of local citizens in Maine. Now, here's my whole thing. Gary Bettman says the team is willing to sign a 30-year non-relocation agreement. You cannot tell me that there will not be some legalese fashioned, finessed, crowbarred in there some way that says, well, we're not going to relocate for 30 years if attendance stays above 60 percent you know what i mean there's gonna be some little footnote some little out if you will well and and because they've been there for nearly 30 years now and it they they yeah 96 was the first year there yeah they draw flies now is that because the team has sucked for the last decade or so sure oh yeah and, absolutely and getting there is a pain in the ass you know like the venue isn't in a good spot the team sucks like there's a lot of layers to that cake. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that there's not going to be some wording in there that is like, you know, we're not going to move for 30 years if these things are satisfied. Well, and here's and here's the other thing, right? You mentioned attendance. The playoffs in 2012. Playoffs. And the playoffs in 2012 and the and the and the times that Arizona went to the playoffs in the late 90s, right? Those buildings were packed mm-hmm. and bubbling, right? But that was back when they played in era, or in downtown, right? Before 2012, the- they were in Glendale by that point. But yeah, the point is, and it's sort of a cliche, right? But like people will show up if the team is good, right? It doesn't matter who or what the team is. And so, and I think that's why, you know, I think that's why there's been a push to stay in um, you know, Phoenix and the surrounding area as, and I know Ian is going to mention how the TV rights for that area is really important to the NHL, which I agree with as well. But, you know, I can understand why the NHL has done so much work to stay in Arizona, but you know, like at the end of the day, like the commitments that people make, they still have to happen. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, we're going to do this, 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 and it's going to turn it around. Okay, we'll do it. Right. Because how many owners have the Coyotes have had in the last seven years? You know what I mean? <laughs> so 
and and all things aside, you know, kind of the last point, and then we can move on. <laughs> can we? I just mapped it out right. <laughs> I just mapped it out right now. Tempe, Arizona, is five hours by car away from my house. Oh, so I'm so I'm putting the the I smell Gary, road trip. Gary Bettman or Jerry Bettman, if you listen to Arrow Overdrive, Gary, <laughs> if you put an All Star Game or a draft in the new Tempe Arena, and you need and you need your uh, you need you need a uh, a uh, fan podcast host uh, to make an appearance in the media level, you know, just give us a call. I mean, for those who don't know, AJ and I have both been credentialed for an All Star Game, so we have experience. <laughs> hey now. You know yeah, who I'll wasn't credentialed? I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's our next guest. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. And now, why are things <laughs> falling apart in Calgary? I mean, is it bad when your goalie tells the media, I suck at hockey? Which is exactly what Jacob Markstrom did earlier this week. Well, what the hell is going on there? Like, I don't even understand what is, is something happening in the water in Alberta? Because both teams have just. Whew, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, again, the easy, the easy answer, right? I mean, just say it. The <laughs> like Elias Lindholm, uh, Elias Lindholm, Johnny Gaudreau, and Matthew Kachuk. That was Calgary's top line last year. They were all over point, either point per game or over point per game last year, right? Fast forward to this year, Lindholm having a very good season, not a point per game season. Huberdeau, who came in to replace. Uh, Johnny Matthew Hockey. Kachuk. Oh, um, oh, same. Thing. Huberto, who was who was acquired to replace Matthew Kachuk, he's he's struggling a little bit. And I and you know there's some conversations. Oh, maybe he's sick. May you know I I thought I had heard that he might have been sick. I know there's also a conversation of trying to mentally still wrap his head around the trade, which I understand to a degree. And then you know certain other guys have have sort of trailed off a little bit. Like I think the one guy who's maybe exceeding what he did last year is Tyler Toffoli. But again, if Lindholm has dropped back a little bit, Kadri has dropped back a little bit from last year. Manjapani has dropped back a little bit. Everybody is sort of kind of coming down to earth a little bit from what they did last year. And then I think, <laughs> dude, Sutter's you know, head like, is going to explode. Right. And then obviously the goaltending is a big element of it as well. But again, you're, it's sort of like the, the perfect storm, right? Where, you know, you're, you're not getting a lot of goals, uh, from your offense and then your defense, they're sort of going through their own struggles, right? I mean, and not to put the blame on one guy, but, you know, Mackenzie Weger was supposed to be like the power play specialist, you know, 23, 24, 25 minutes a night, PP1, all that kind of stuff. He's only got six assists. Yeah. Like, it doesn't help when your best defenseman is underperforming. All right. Uh, last week, the Sharks allowed, the they made history with Seattle. We If you go back, Last season, the Sharks gave the Kraken their first ever shutout in team history. Then last week, they allowed the most goals ever to Seattle in Kraken's history, but not to be outdone. The LA Kings said, hold my beer. In one of the most ridiculous games I have ever watched, uh, what, what, there were 17 goals scored in this game. The, like it, They were coming awesome. at like every three minutes, there was a goal. <laughs> <laughs> now, the best part... Epic. Oh, dude, so epic! Uh, what what's this this uh, th this woman? She's like the uh, Kraken's version of Curtis Brown on the what's her? Oh, Alice, uh, Allison? Allison. Yeah, Allison. Allen, really? Yeah, she's yeah, she's top notch. I like her. Well, she top notch. Uh, but she kind of uh, broke hockey Twitter and and hockey Reddit for a little bit. You you tell me what you hear. Ross Fletcher, Allison Lucan. Obviously. I mean, Obviously. I don't know. What's going on here? There's no structure. This is shitty hockey. I don't know. Enjoy it, I guess. Sure. Oh, wow. Apologies for that. <laughs> this, this is crazy. She said she said shinny. Everybody heard shitty. Even the guy to her right heard shitty. I mean, I, I think she probably meant shinny. Uh, yeah, and I and I, I think if you go back and really listen, maybe she, yeah, she probably did hear shinny, but maybe I, I don't know. Listen to the explanation. It was shinny, 
Yes, the word yes. is shinny, my friends, double ends. <laughs> it means wide open hockey, no defense. It doesn't mean anything else. That was the word I said. JT Brown used it last year too. No cursing on air ever here. It's <laughs> shinny hockey. Maybe me, maybe me, maybe me. Maybe not there you may else. not be control on the play on the ice, but we have control over the words we use here on air. Shinny hockey, please stop tagging me. Enjoy the third period. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop tagging me. I mean, you go back and listen. It sounded like she said shitty. And the whole thing is, would anybody have blamed her at that point? <laughs> well, no. And that's the other thing. Like, even if, again, like maybe she said that, you know, I, you know, I don't know. But again, if, if that is what she said, it's, it's not like that was incorrect, you know? <laughs> that's the whole thing. It's like either one would have been absolutely true. What does it matter? But the now everybody got you know, uh, up in arms over that, which I, I I thought was great. It's who gives a shit. But for me, the story of this one, dude, Jared McCann following the game with a solid dig at San Jose. You know, uh, I haven't been in a game like this since junior hockey and um, other than San Jose, I guess, right? And um, you know, that's about it. <laughs> I've never been in a game this stupid. Well, except for that one last week against San Jose. Aside from that, it was all junior <laughs> Hey, you know what though? Uh, I I support that. We love Jared. <laughs> Jared McCann. His Jared McCann is a friend of TTG, sort of, not really. So we we support him flaming us. No, I feel that <laughs> though. It was so cool. But the next morning, you know, the Kings put Cal Peterson on waivers. He cleared. I don't know. I mean, it came off a little bit of a scapegoat, but of course the Kings said no. We need this guy to go down and find his confidence in his game, which of course goes back to one of my uh, favorite quotes from Drew Remendo. It's like, oh, he lost his confidence. Oh, where'd he lose it? Where'd he last see it? Maybe go back there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Finally, for this week around the NHL, um, I'm just going to ask you this. Is uh, Jordan Bennington still a bitch? Yep, 100%. There you go. Hits. Talk about a guy who needs to get blown up, right? Dude. How has it, when it eventually happens, somebody's got to fucking be the hero in this and blow his ass up. I don't care what the retribution is from the Blues, or I shouldn't say retribution, the response from the Blues. I don't care what it is. Chief needs to get lit the hell up. I mean, we all know the story. 2019 comes out of nowhere, has the season, the whole do I look nervous, you know, arrogance. And that's fine. I didn't have a problem with that. But... He had he had that what was it that sucker fake out rabbit punch towards uh, Eric, Eric Carlson. Carlson? I mean the dude has a history, but look at what the hell he did against Zucker for the Penguins a couple days ago. First, he's got ten in nine career oh. games and look out. He got clipped pretty hard there yeah, by nobody, Bennington. Nobody saw it. Jason so Zucker now down. they do. Now they are pointing at the goaltender Bennington the referee looked around and, and as if t he didn't notice anything now I think he's been tipped off maybe by the linesman that he's going to have to make a call here the net and it was just a little bit of the glove hand and Bennington's been known to uh, show a lot of contract uh, contact excuse me let's see what happened to Jordan Stahl and Bennington in the last game this I, I don't understand how he gets away with that. Now, to be fair, if I if if memory serves, was wasn't it Aaron Dell who completely just laid out Mark Stone? Yeah. <laughs> but to me, that was like Stone was coming in hot, and Dell's like, "No, you're not." And like it felt, dude, this was like a sucker punch, dude. Well, and again, this is not you know it, literally it's not a new. month. No, it's not. Literally a month ago, like I, I, I'm like thinking, I'm like, we just talked about this. Literally a month ago, he gave Ilya Sorokin a bump at the end of a period in a game, seemingly just for the hell of it, you know, gave Sorokin a bump, which again, like I know, like it, it's a pretty, like you look at the footage and it's a pretty innocuous sort of bump. He kind of just bumped him in the shoulder and moved on. But to, to play the, we got to protect star players card a little bit here, like, Imagine, imagine Bennington bumps Sorokin, and let's just say in an extreme situation, say he goes down. Well, well, your Vesna favorite is injured the rest of the year because Bennington's a big fucking baby, right? <laughs> and and you know, and not only that, but again, you mentioned the pump fake on Eric Carlson, which actually led to Dubnik. Remember him? 
challenging <laughs> Bennington to a fight. Yep. And so, and I feel like that kind of ties back to my conversation about not stepping up is your backup goalie that you're your one B goalie that you just acquired that year stood up for your meal ticket. You know, that kind of ties yeah. back to what we were talking about earlier. Well, And then Bennington, the, the great thing about this, of course, is that that happens. Zucker scores not even two minutes into the next period. Bennington gets pulled in this game after letting in four and has the balls to chirp the Penn's bench on the way out and gets 10 minutes for inciting. I, I'm sorry, we, dude, there's there's a little part of me that wants to get our buddies Kurt and Jeff from uh, Let's Go Blues on here just to go, are you still supporting this jerk off? Again, if I were if I were in the NHL, which I'm I'm nowhere near even being a, a fucking, you know, <laughs> uh, I, you know, whatever your lowest level of hockey, you know, caliber player. But if I was in the NHL and, and again, maybe this comes to me just being kind of a shit disturber. I'm beaking him every chance I get, you know, oh, he goes dude, behind there's the no head. way you can't get into this guy's head. No, I just beak him every chance I get. He comes out of the blue. I'm going to get really close to him. Not going to touch him, but I'm going to get really close to him. You know, like it, it, it's funny, the whole, you mentioned it in that season, you know, the whole, do I look nervous? And, 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 and I got a kick out of it too. I thought, wow, you know, this is some really, I really like this heel energy from this guy. I'm really vibing off of it, but it seems like, you know, every time one of these situations comes up, right? Carlson, Sorokin, Jason Zucker, it's like, you do seem nervous. You <laughs> That's know? what I'm like, saying, dude. You seem like you're trembling. Yeah. What's your glitch? <laughs> <laughs> dude, just an absolute tool. All right. Uh, let's move on to um, that other team in San Jose that NBCS Bay Area seems to actually care about now. <laughs> Ooh, Barracuda. Hey, now. Your Barracuda. I want to know who the hell hit, uh, who was it? Jasper Weatherby on the head with a teddy bear last night? <laughs> the Cuda have played four games this week. They hosted the Wild twice and the Tucson Road Runners twice. If only I had the soundboard to go me me. They lost twice to Iowa, but picked up two victories over Tucson. Pretty good night, or I shouldn't say night, but a pretty good week for uh, the captain. Agazino. I mean, dude is, uh, it feels like he's getting points in every other game, if not, you know, every three out of four. Also a good week. It felt like for, uh, Gushkin, a really good week for Bordalo. But, uh, if you want to talk to somebody who's actually paying attention about this shit, we bring in our buddy, the one and only Ian Reed. If you, if you're following us on Teal Town USA with the Twitter, this is the guy you can thank for, uh, leading in all of the uh, the commentary and delivering you all the gifts. Ian, tell me what was good, what was bad for the for the Barracuda. Um I mean what was good obviously was this weekend, but we had to unfortunately play those two games against the Wild first. Um <laughs> those weren't so good. The the one thing that I will say about the two games where they lost to the Wild was that they the the problem with this team is it's starting slow, but they seem to kind of get their act together as the game goes on. And I thought both of the wild game was kind of a case of too little too late. Um, if they didn't dig themselves a hole to begin with, then I think they probably would have been okay in those games. Um, but if you, you know, if you're going to spot Jesper Wallstead, a, a four goal cushion, you're going to have a hard time getting back in the game. And so last I looked, Decent goaltender. Yeah, I mean he's <laughs> high end probably pick. high. Yeah, he, he's 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 probably you know of the guys currently playing in the AHL, he's the guy that you want to watch because he I think is going to be incredibly special um, as a goalie goes. He's obviously playing his first game in uh, first year, sorry, in North America. So that's um, so that's you know it's it's an adjustment for him, but I think he's doing okay considering the team he's on. And again, like I said, if you if you put yourself in a big hole uh, against Jesper Wallstead, you're gonna have a hard time climbing back into the game. And I will tell you this week, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, uh, I believe it was today. Mark Andre Fleury got lit up by the Dallas Stars pretty good, so maybe Iowa's very much kind of like we'll have him right to you. Just give us a moment. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I think the smart play here is you leave him in the HL, you let him acclimate to the North American game, uh, and then you let him basically hammer down the door. Um, goalies who have had success with that after coming from over from Europe, like Igor Shosturkin was just stupid good in the HL before they called him up. I think you just you just let him marinate there. Uh, there's no rush for Jesper Wallstead to get called up to the Wild. Nice. Uh, who who looked better for you this week uh, in net for the the Cuda? Was it Man sticking out a little bit more, <laughs> Mac and Yemi? Are they both just kind of like were hosed by the piss poor defense in front of them? I thought. Look, I think both goalies have been pretty good uh, for the Barracuda. I mean, if you look at the numbers for both goalies, they're they're really good. Like, um, you know, Strauss Mann has, uh, you know, in his six games played, he has a 920 save percentage. Um, Etun Makanyemi has played more games. Obviously, he's played 12 games for the Barracuda so far. Uh, a 918 save percentage. Both really good numbers for the AHL. Um, I don't really... I don't have a favorite between the two. Um, I think Mackie Niemi can be a little, a little over aggressive sometimes uh, when he plays, when he's playing, but um, I really like both goalies. And I, I, I'm glad that with Aaron Dell being up, like poor Strauss man isn't on the uh, constant flight to Wichita to get (laughs) game time in. Right. Refresh my memory. Mackie Niemi came in part of the Burns deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And as far as that goes, like that's looking like a really uh, good move. Cause I know a lot of people are kind of down on the Burns trade now because it's like, well, you know, you look at you, well, Steven Lawrence is the guy that's playing on the Sharks, right? So you're not seeing E2 McIniemy, but McIniemy has been really good. I think if you go on my Twitter feed today, cause I try not to confuse the, the Teal Town account when both game teams are playing at the same time, mm-hmm. I have just a bunch of, uh, video of Mackinami making some pretty good saves for the uh, Barracuda today. Nice. So, what about Agazino? Seems like the I mean, a three point night tonight. The captain seems like he's uh, I mean, piloting the ship as best he can. I don't think he's going to get a call up to the Sharks anytime soon, but doing a great job piloting uh, the, the Barracuda ship, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Andre Gazzino has been, I, I am becoming a big fan of Andre Gazzino. Like, Gazzino is a guy who's like, he's pretty much, I know he has an initial contract, but he's spent most of his time in the AHL. He scored his 200th goal in the AHL today. Um, but yeah, he's been really good. I mean, he's he's the captain and I think he's led by example. I think he's one of the veterans that has, after I think a slow start for the team, I think he's definitely leading by example. He's a guy that, I'm becoming a huge fan of, even if I don't think he's, you know, a future shark. Um, it's easy to fall in love with some of these guys that are career AHLers. Okay, now let's let's talk about the 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 three elephants in the room: <laughs> <laughs> Bordalo, Eklund, Gushkin. Uh, all of which had, uh, you know, Gushkin had a three point game against uh, one in one of the Iowa games. Yep. Uh, you got a three point night for Bordalo, who also recently had a hat trick. I mean, Boards has six goals, three assists over the last seven games. Uh, I mean, are you a little curious as to why none of those three have been called up yet? Or you're just kind of very much kind of like, hey, let them do what they need to do with the CUDA and try to get this team to continue going. I think the last time I saw they were fourth in the Pacific division. So uh, yeah, they're fourth in the Pacific division, but I will caveat that in a second. Um, mm-hmm. Onto your question though. Um, yeah. Gushkin, I would leave down. Um, I think Gushkin's come on, come on as late, but he hasn't been super fantastic the whole time. Right. And I, I really like this player, but I don't think like he, to me is a guy that screams like I need to be in the NHL. Thomas Bortle, on the other hand, should be a shark right now. Um, I thought that at the beginning of the season and the way he's come, he had a little bit of a lull in the middle of the of the, of the shark, uh, Barracuda season, sorry, but he has really come on again. And I just think like when I look at the guys that they are trotting out on the third line for the Sharks, I do not <laughs> understand why Thomas Bortolo isn't on that third line. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Like he is, in my opinion, like Thomas Bordalo is like, he might not have all the points that Egazino does, but he has 11 goals, five assists, 16 points. And I think like he is the, he is the guy down there. I mean, Egazino might be the point leader um, with seven goals, 13 assists for 20 points. But to me, 
Thomas Bortolo is it, Thomas Bortolo and everyone else. All right. Uh, let me ask you this then as well. <clears throat> if uh, what are things looking like for some guys that have played for the Sharks? I mean, Reedy, Weatherby, and Merkley all are going to be RFA after this season. You think they all continue on? You think anybody? Uh, I mean, they all got looks with the with the Sharks. Yeah. Um. Let me start with Ryan Merkley first. I think Ryan Merkley is a guy who, again, here's another guy who, um. I was pretty critical of when the season for the Barracuda started, but I think he's really come on at the end um, of late. I think he's been really good. Plus minus is a garbage stat, but he is one of a handful of plus players on this Barracuda team. Most are minuses. So, I mean, that says something there. Uh, A lot of talk about how, you know, Ryan Merkley can't play in his, you know, can't play in his own end. I think he's been really, really good in his own end. I was really concerned when when Derek Pouliot went down with injury because yeah. I wasn't sure how that was going to affect Merkley's game, but he has kept just trotting along. Um, yeah, I'm, Ryan Merkley's game has been really good in his own end, I think. Um, yeah, does he still have those moments of, yeah, oops, I'm an offensive defenseman <laughs> and I screwed up? Of course he does. Um, but I find there a lot fewer and even in the offensive zone he's doing a lot better of making decisions and using his vision rather than trying to just skate the puck for wherever and then forget where he's going with it or runs out of moves to make (laughs) skating um, to where no one doesn't make a move yeah and i I, and i threw a gif of that on the teal town account yesterday of kind of like kind of showing what i meant when i say that but those plays have been really few and far between in the last little bit of run. Like, I think he's done a really good job dancing along the line, you know, moving quarterbacking the power play, uh, moving the puck around. If, if Nick Chichek, I mean, obviously Chichek had a rough game tonight, I think, but I think it's uh, fun. not unfortunate for, for Chichek. I think Chichek doing okay in the NHL is fine, but if he, if they were looking to kind of like swap Chichak out, Merkley, I think, should get a look on the big club because I think he has played well enough to earn it. But if they, but with uh, Knizhov getting hurt, uh, Knizhev, sorry, getting hurt yesterday uh, in the wild game, the Barracuda defense would look really bad without him. So I'm not sure what the Sharks do there. I think Merkley should get a look on the big club at some point this year. Um, but I can understand them wanting to keep him down at the same time. Um, and you asked about uh, Scott Reedy and Weatherby. Weatherby. Um, Weatherby, I don't know. The Sharks have so many Scott uh, Weatherby, Jasper Weatherby's. Like they just have so many of that guy on the roster right now. So I think he's been fine on the Barracuda. I like Jasper Weatherby on the Cuda. I don't. I just, I don't think he's going to change much in your bottom six where he would slot in. Scott Reedy, I like. I think Scott Reedy's had a pretty good season so far. Um, the thing with Scott Reedy is, like, he's not the, like, he's his his skating is not his strongest attribute, right? And I think that makes it really hard to transition to the NHL. I think he had a respectable season, four goals, five assists, nine points. You can't, I like uh, Scott Reedy, but I just, again, I don't know where... I don't know where you would slot him in on the Sharks right now. Um, and he doesn't go before Bartolo. Yeah, right. Well, boy. <laughs> I think, again, like I said last week, there there's just a wall between these teams. And unless injury mm-hmm. begs some sort of uh, movement, I think we're, we're seeing what we're seeing. And they are just going to let the CUDA be the CUDA, especially, was, was it last season where the had uh god wasn't there like a it was like six straight games six or seven straight games where it's like half the sharks because of covid were yeah. barracuda players yeah so <laughs> yeah and and you're obviously you're not having that this year by design i think you would they signed a lot of guys that are in my opinion just taking up space but they're on NHL deals so what are you going to do um, you, you brought up the barracuda being fourth in the division and i do want to caveat that though because mm-hmm. The thing here is, and that sounds really, really good. <laughs> Until you, you learn. Sort it by points percentage. Then you would, the Barracuda would fall to seventh because the Barracuda have played 22 <sighs> games and everyone ahead of them has played less games. 
Um, the Ontario Reign just won tonight, which was what bumped them to fourth. Uh, they've only played 19 games. Uh, the Calgary Wranglers, who are in second, have played 20 games. The Colorado Eagles are the leading team. They've played 21. And then you go look behind them in the standings, and Coachella's been also really good. Um, they've only played 17 games, and that's actually their next opponent, I think, for the Barracuda. So yes. that'll be an interesting game to see how they um, respond there, because I think Coachella Valley has been really, really good, but they've only played 17 games. Uh, and the Aberster Canuck has played two less games as well, uh, and they are just both of those teams are just a point behind the Barracuda. So um, once that equalizes out a little bit, if the Barracuda can't find some more consistent winning, um, obviously... You know, they got two wins against the Roadrunners this weekend, which is good. But then you lost two games to the Wild, right? So as long as that trend continues, the the Barracuda are going to have a hard time uh, staying in the specific division hunt. Jeez. Oh, that's too bad. So the yeah, kid... I hate to be a downer, but I got to bring the facts. <clears throat> hey, it happens. Uh, it, it's, it's Funnily enough, it actually is kind of a light week for both the Cuda and the Sharks. Uh, the Cuda are, <laughs> the Cuda are going to finish up a six game homestand this week with games against the Kraken affiliate, as Ian just mm-hmm. mentioned, the Coachella Firebirds, and then the Oilers affiliate, the Bakersfield Condors. December 9th against Coachella, it should be noticed, they're noted that it is Top Gun night. What the hell that entails, I have no idea, but my interest is peaked. I love minor <laughs> hockey for all those silly nights. Like, I just, Dude. how can you not? I, everybody be better be in flight suits. Uh, I want to hear nothing but Top Gun music throughout the whole thing. At some point, their volleyball should be invoked in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> volleyball intermission. <laughs> exactly. Then December 11th versus Bakersfield, Healthcare Worker Appreciation Night. I mean, if you're going to go to a game, that's probably a good one to go to. <sighs> but here we are. That's yeah, a, Bakersfield, like those, the, those are the kind of teams that the Barracuda really need to pick up points against. I think they need to hang tough against a team like Coachella. I think that's going to be a tough road for them to hoe. Again, and the other problem with the Barracuda is too, I mentioned uh, Knizov going, uh, Knizov going off uh, with injury. Um, that depletes a uh, blue line that's already pretty depleted. We got two guys playing on PTOs right now uh, to try and just fill holes. So that's obviously problematic it, for the Barracuda. At some point, do we just need to start saying Artemi and Nikolai? Uh, maybe. I, I'd <laughs> probably still screw it up. <laughs> so so last I looked, the leaders for the Barracuda is Bordolo with 11 goals, Merkley with 13 assists, 17 points for Agazino. So there you are. But the prospect focus of the week, stick taps to Ethan Cardwell mm-hmm. with the OHL's Bari Colts. Uh, dude, Chief has 11 goals, 16 assists, 27 points, in 16 games, that is a 1.73 point per game average. Hey, now, oh, you gotta like that. One thing I do want to say before we, uh, before I get out of here, sure. Um, one prospect we didn't mention, William Eklund, obviously. Who? Um, on the top, <laughs> yes. Who? <laughs> on the top of mind for many Sharks fans, he's been really good as well. I said I mentioned there's a handful of Barracuda players that are pluses right now. William Eklund is one of them. He has come on of late. He has six goals, eight assists, uh, including a beautiful assist on the game-winning goal tonight. Um, William Eklund has been really, really good, uh, and now the counting stats are starting to show it because I think he's been good the whole time, and old people were worried. Now he's a little bit worried too. I'm not going to lie, uh, but he has really come on um, of late, so that's positive to see too. It is. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ian. Uh, if you want to hang pleasure. out, if you want to hang out, go ahead. Um, I will. <laughs> what else do we have to do? Uh, let's move on to our. And again, jerk. I apologize. I didn't activate my my stupid echo shit. So I'm just going to go the oh, tweet darn. of <laughs> the week. Oh darn! Uh, how to fix soccer? Uh, Jarvis here has figured it out. Uh, number one, the field is fucking huge. Shrink it. Number two, too many players on the field. Limited to three forwards, two defenders, and a goalie. Number three, players should be able to come in and out whenever they want. Don't stop the game. Number four, shrink the goal. Number five, ice everywhere. I mean, I think he nailed it. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I, you know, I am, I do have some interest in soccer myself. However, hockey is obviously the superior sport. And uh, the uh, the plan that Jarvis is putting forward, I support it. 
And uh, it, it's you know what's actually kind of funny. I had <laughs> what do you got? Five. I had five different people either show or send that to me. <laughs> And I'm just like I'm, I'm. I was like trying to go through, and I'm like, what, what, what are, what are people trying to say? Like, <laughs> why, why have five people showed that to me? Because <laughs> <laughs> it was true and it was funny. Uh, <laughs> hey, should we give away something? Um, I mean, I guess if you really, really want to. I mean, uh, Burge I mean, got whatever, whatever clears out the closet, right? Yeah, uh, Burge got the uh, what what jerk called lunchbox 1.0. Yep. Correct. Uh, Ra- Rashkis. Sean, Ra- Sean Rashkis. Yep. Got the uh, 49ers uh, jersey. Yep. And uh, we have, uh, you can see, behind, why does the sign keep falling down? I don't get that. <laughs> I keep putting it on top and it falls down. Uh, but we have another lunchbox to give away. Uh, I've already forgotten. Bring- I was going to say, can you, can you, can you walk through? Let us know what's in there again. Uh, I've already forgotten. Let's find out. So we we open her up and we see oh look at that there more things have been put in here since the oh, last time we snap. talked holy <laughs> crap so we have what appears to be a Sa- uh, San Jose Barracuda bracelet we Fun. have what appears to be a Stealth Sharks fanny pack Ooh. uh oh a one reef towel from opening night for the Barracuda nice uh the teal together jersey that was the giveaway at the uh, fan appreciation last year, plus the uh, Barkley Goodrow puck, because who doesn't like a game seven wank? Yep. So all up in here. That's a that's a that's a nice little uh, that's a package, nice little package right? there, dude. And yeah. you know what? Fuck! I'll even throw in a sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> because you're here right now, we can't do this all day. <laughs> So with that, it's, uh, it's, like, it's like all the all the infomercials. Like if you call us in the next thirty eight seconds, <laughs> we're gonna throw we're gonna throw in the uh, the dishwasher safe uh, <laughs> meat <laughs> meat hammer. Like you know, like dude, you lost it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, um, I've already forgotten what the hell were the. How did you? How do you have to win this this week? I've forgotten what we put together. Was it shots so, on goal or something? Correct. So the contest for this week <clears throat> and the Sharks, for those who have forgotten, the Sharks played four games this week, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa and Buffalo. And the mission, if you choose to accept it, which um, a quick <laughs> a, a, a quick head count here, uh, 28 people chose to accept the mission um, was you needed to correctly predict uh, how many shots on goal the Sharks would have combined in these four games. And so I'll break it down for you right now. So versus Montreal, 24. Versus Toronto, 24. (laughs) Versus Ottawa, 37. And versus Buffalo tonight, 29. So if you're doing the math at home with us, survey says if you're doing the math at home with us, that is 114 shots on goal over four games. All right. And your winner, with with exactly 114 shots. Oh, oh I love a bullseye right guess. Right on the number. Right on the number. There is not. This is not a double showcase. I'm sorry to and, say, but and only one person right on the number. Correct. <laughs> um, Cam Montrose, who oh. sent me an e- who emailed me their pick. This so again, if you're keeping score at home. Two email winners now and a Twitter winner. Nice. So I don't know if that kind of advanced analytic does anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> but all about um, what do you got there? Numbers? And uh and and Cam uh Cam has responded. He has passed on his address. I'm not gonna dox him, but he is outside of the United States. No sh- um, oh, oh, is he in North America? Yes. Okay. Uh Cam, I hate to break this to you, but if you're outside the US forty eight, you do have to cover the freight. <laughs> and and you will have to pass that message on to him and see if he will decide to accept that mission. And if okay, not, and if fair. not, we'll have to move on to the person closest, which appears to be Jerry F. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, see, here's the thing, and 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 Jerry, if Jerry wants to reveal his answer, that's he did. That's he said awesome. a, he said he said he had one eleven. And 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 so all I'll say oh, is cameras in the chat. Oh, shout out! Hey now. 
buddy. There it is, right there. All right, so there he is. I hate or she I, or they, whatever. I hate to break it to you. I hope you saw everything that's in here. Uh, but yeah, if you're outside the US 48, bro, we're not. I'm. You're gonna have to uh, send a little something via Venmo that like covers the freight. <laughs> because I know shipping this to Canada is probably going to be somewhere around the thirty dollar range, <laughs> and we'll 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 eat like you know like eight or nine bucks to send something, but we don't have the uh, unfortunately we don't have the sponsors yet to allow us to uh, you know eat thirty thirty five dollars to send something to a different country. Unfortunately, we're working on it. So this was so this contest and. You know, ultimately, it would have worked itself out. I mean, we did have a tiebreaker procedure on deck. Um, and how so, close were we? How many How many um, guesses did you have that were, all, like, what was the one that had the most? Like, did you have, like, 18 people all said, like, 109? Like, what was the, you know, what was the closest? So I'll, so here, I'll walk you through it. And, and I'm assuming, I'd love to see another message from Cam. I'm assuming... Oh, he says, yep, um, let me know. I can e-transfer. Nice. Okay, so I'll, so Cam, I will, AJ will pass along to me that information, and then I will send it to you in email, and you can go from there directly with AJ. Um, so, because Cam has accepted, and now I can just publicly reveal all the answers. So, we had, and again, we had a tiebreaker procedure in place, so it was never in doubt, but you start to get a little nervous because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so we had two people and I'm just going to go numerically. We had two people who said 99. And Ooh. I thought, you know, after the first two games, I thought that's what we were heading towards. I thought it was going to be very low. <laughs> You're like, God um, damn it. And then, so we had two people who said 108. We had two people who said 110. We had two people who said 116. We had three, three people who said 118 wow and which that one i was like oh my god what are we, gonna <laughs> we have do? three heroes <laughs> uh two two people said 127 oh um and uh anybody did anybody finally come in with the one dollar um well it, it's hard to say because all of the all of the answers are blind right mm -hmm. but but I will I will say so. Cam, our winner, had 114. There was somebody who said 113. Oh shit! Yeah, so it was close. So I'm sorry to say, Jerry, you were not closest. Um, we did have someone who said, like as I said, 113, and then we did we did have two people say 116. So it was it was very close on both ends, and we did have a couple. I, I'm not going to name any names, but there were a couple answers where I was like, hmm, that feels very lofty. All right. Um, so we so have yeah, one. No, and and you know, it, in case you have any interest, um, both of our two previous winners did uh, participate in this one, and they were one of them. I'm not going to say who. One of them was not so close. One of them was close-ish. So that was kind of interesting to see. Oh, hey now, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what happened, the, dude? The news we've all been waiting for. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, dude, I love Brody so much. Brody Brazil has evidently decided that one channel is not enough for him. He ha he now has three different YouTube channels. <laughs> this is great, dude. So he has Brody Brazil Aviation, Brody Brazil like his normal sports thing. And then Brody Brazil, home studio, podcasting, broadcasting, whatever. That's outstanding. Holy crap. Well, at least none of us have to uh, subscribe to the aviation one, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to fly planes, so I'm good. Um, you know what? I want to have some fun next week, right, with the giveaway. Because we're giving away something else. This is, oh. <laughs> the, like I said, we're, we're going to roll this way through Christmas, but if we're, if either myself or Jerk are feeling froggy, which we mm -hmm. tend to do, mm -hmm. we may roll this through Valentine's Day. We may roll this through St. Patrick's. We may roll this through until the end of the goddamn season, depending on how much stuff Jerk is willing to part with. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's my fun take for the giveaway this coming week. Here's how you're gonna. Here, here's how you're gonna enter. All right. The Sharks okay. are only playing two games this week, unfortunately. 
Uh, or fortunately, depending on who you ask. Uh, true that. Uh, especially if you're a, <laughs> a somebody who's involved in a takeover. Uh, Vancouver and Anaheim. Uh, both of those teams losing records, right? But here, here's the question because we, again, we don't want to do uh, something that you can Google. We want you to predict the future in order to win a game. So I'm going to ask you this, dear listeners. Over these two games between Vancouver and Anaheim, how much time, without going over, how much time will Tomas Hurdle spend on the power play during those two Ooh. games? Interesting. All right. Now, if you go in and that you is... look, that's a spicy <laughs> meatball, right? Yeah, that is, that's, that's, tonight, that's something. Tonight versus the Sabres, Tomas Hurdle spent a minute 13 on that power play. That was just in that one game, right? So the Sharks will be playing two games. You also have to take into account as well, against uh, Toronto, the Sharks did not draw a power play. So the answer could, in fact, be zero. We're not hey, sure. But, but you know what? Against Ottawa, three minutes, 45 seconds. See? so Against Montreal, six minutes. Dude, this is all I'm saying. So... Is this meatball, uh, is the spiciness to your liking, Jerk? I, I'm, I think there's a couple things that come on, <clears throat> that come to mind. Number one. Because I could have been a dick and said how much power play time, do, or how much penalty kill time does EK65 play? Right. Well, that would have been easy. <laughs> but, one dollar. <laughs> but the thing is, so there's two takeaways I have here. Number one, we're going to get a lot of drastically different answers for sure. Because again, Oh, dig it. You, Could be all over the place. You as you mentioned, the amount of power play, like you can look at average ice time and you can kind of do some math and say, Hmm, well, you know, he played 25 ish. these last three games. You can sort of math that out and come to an understanding. But this, you know, as we talked about in the game, in these four games this week, five power plays against Montreal, zero against Toronto, uh, four against Ottawa, and then one against Buffalo. Drastically different numbers. Every game is going to have drastically different deployments. Like, I I, I don't want to say that this is basically an educated guess, but that's what this contest is. Hell yeah. And so because of that, I think we're going to see so many drastically different numbers. Mm. I also... I'm curious to see if this one may end up going to a runoff. I don't think it would, no but I kind of think that's always on the table. Oh, I don't know. But, you know what? Hey, are, are we going to allow half halves? Like if you no. know, like tonight could you know Hurdle played sixteen oh one. Should we say sixteen oh one and a half? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, oh oh, and I want to hit up uh, Hot Wheels real quick, dude. Dusty Man. Uh, thank you so much for your donation on Venmo. Super duper appreciate, dude. Good looking out, dude. Appreciate that. Thank you, Hot Wheels. Appreciate it. Um, so that is the question. Okay, so that that's how you enter. Again, the way we play this, you will email hockey jerk ten. That's all one word, no spaces. Hockey jerk ten at the G number ten. Yeah, the number 10, one zero. Oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Hockey jerk one zero. At G we need to get you a different email, uh, but hockey <laughs> jerk we had like Teal Town contest or something. But hockey jerk ten one zero at gmail dot com. Send him the answer to the question: How much time, without going over, will Tomas Hurdle spend on the power play during the two games this week against Vancouver and Anaheim? Jerk, I have to ask you this right now: Do you have an entry yet? I have two. Nice. Okay. And one for sure is currently in the chat. Hey now. So, and here's the other caveat that I'm going to throw on this fire, right? Okay. We've done two lunch boxes and a 49er jersey. I've just put out, like, this is what we're going to do. You know what? For funsies, this week, this it's week's contest. Lunchbox. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm going to give the, the winner the option. Okay. I'm going to say, would you like a retro lunchbox or do you want to throw it back a couple seasons? Would you like a Kevin LeBanc piggy bank? Ooh. I mean, a boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. Just saying. I mean, it, could even be, it could even be a boat. Like, <laughs> Dude. So <laughs> now, that's... Let me, now let me ask you a question here. Oh, query I me a, this. I have, a, I have one question for sure. 
and then sure we've only been on for two hours and 15 minutes but go ahead hey you know what <laughs> hey <laughs> hey <laughs> but we have you Shut say it. we've been on for over two hours we've got 47 live viewers so hey. people obviously care to a degree but no um, they, ju- they okay. just wanted a lunchbox but go ahead Sure. Fair. <laughs> okay, so my so I have one question for sure, potentially two, depending on your answer to the first one. Yeah, whip it out. Will either the lunchbox 3.0 or the piggy bank come with things inside? Yes. Okay. Yes. The answer is yes, folks. If you didn't hear AJ, they will be number. There. Question number two. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on? the contents of both items being a mystery until the winner is chosen. So it's a blind pick. Uh, I'm down with that. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm totally down with that. And, and, and now, and now let me ask you this. Do you think as part of the email or Jesus the Twitter, Christ, DM, you're the fucking riddler over here. Go ahead. I, well, I just want to make sure we got it dialed <laughs> in part of the email or the Twitter DM. However you contact me, I think when you give your guess, you should indicate which one you want. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. You, you answer the, no, you you answer the question. If you win, you're given the option. Okay. I, you don't think it would be more fun to be like, okay, so-and-so won and they wanted the piggy bank. So here's what's in it. Uh, no, Okay. (laughs) because you know why? Because we can contact why? the per- <laughs> why? Because we can contact the person. We're gonna know if they won by next Saturday night, so we'll know before the show. Not like like not like tonight's takeover bullshit. So sure. we'll know beforehand. So you can actually, you'll have time to contact them and ask them which one they want. And then when That's we go point. on when we go on live, then we can actually reveal the contents of both if we want. Well, I don't know. Maybe whichever <laughs> one isn't chosen, we keep it a secret and roll it over. Yeah, perhaps. It's, it's, it's a dude. It's a. Oh, I didn't realize the keys to a 2022 Corvette was going to be inside the piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's that's how you enter email hockey jerk one zero at gmail dot com, or you can hit them up directly on Twitter hockey and, underscore jerk. And let me ask you this: another question. So, oh, fuck. do do we want? <laughs> I which I know again I don't think it'll be an issue but do we want to have a tiebreaker or should we just do tiebreakers are for draw? losers Okay so we'll just do ran- <laughs> if there's if if multiple people we'll get it right We'll spin the wheel we'll spin the wheel Yeah we'll just do random draw Okay cool yeah. Cool 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 All right so coming up this and, week oh Jesus fuck we're never going to leave go I'm, ahead Well and, and but again <laughs> here's the thing so the Sharks, they play this week, as you mentioned. They play on Wednesday, and they play on if Friday. If we keep going, they're going to start playing right now. Right. Well, you know. <laughs> so there's no, you know, the last two contests, because we had four games and there was a takeover, no freebies this time. So Oh, that shit to- has to be in before puck drop versus yeah. Vancouver. So if you're listening, Wednesday, Wednesday 7.37 p.m. No, 7.30. 7.30, baby. Eh, whatever. Yeah. 7.30 Wednesday no, has to be in by then. No free... You know, last two, we gave a freebie. We gave a free square. Yeah. Not this time. Because there's only two games. So, so the Sharks, again, only have two games on the schedule this week. Join us next Sunday at our normal time. Christ Almighty. 7 p.m. Pacific. We'll get into another week of Sharks hockey. It's going to be shorter than this one. I guarantee you. There's no takeover. There's only two games. The Cooter are only playing two games. Uh, th- th- that's it. Next week might be the one time we actually do a tight 45. But remember to that's check funny. out. Huh? I said that's funny. There you go. Remember to check out our post-game cast following every game. We got Puck Guy. We got Ian. We got Landy, Dana, Mark. So many to, to, uh, to, to listen to following every single Sharks game. So go check that out. Remember, you can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. Follow me at AJ underscore strong. You don't have to. It's no biggie. Don't care. Uh, remember, but follow Teal Town USA. Uh, remember to leave your take in the comments section of this YouTube video if you were not able to join us live. And with that, I will throw it over. And you know what? <laughs> Vamp for a second because uh, AJ has to, uh, I don't know, uh, fill the pool. What's your famous last words? 
Famous last words. See, it's funny. AJ wanted to wrap it up, and then in his time of need, he wants me to talk and talk and talk. Isn't it funny how things happen? Um, I don't know. I don't really have any last words. I mean, I you know, we've been going for, God damn it, you know, over two hours. Like, I don't really feel like there's anything more, you know, profound that I could say, right? I mean, I feel like we've sort of hit the end of everything here. Um I don't know. I, it's it excites me to see so many people like entering our contest. I mean, obviously, you know, we right now, you know, we we had 47 live viewers and, you know, only 28 people enter the contest. So obviously not everybody's entering and that's fine. It's not a big deal. But why the fact you? that we the fact that we've gotten so many the fact that we've gotten like so many people who are like, yeah, you know what? I want that. Like, I want to participate. I want to be involved. I think it's really cool. And I think it's kind of another reason what makes this so exciting is like the fact that, you know, so many people out there like give a shit enough to like send me an email and try and win a prize. You know, they care that much about the show and like what we do. And it's really awesome. And, you know, if you do care, like AJ said, next week we'll be back, um, you know, 7 PM Pacific, uh, you know, with another episode and, um, it's going to be awesome. I think so. And Hey, you want to here here's the whole thing like we we've uh, said it many times when it comes to the giveaways again we're not dumping on anybody who does this or whatever we're not requiring you to follow or you know subscribe to 18 different social media things retweet this and do this and post on reddit and this and blah 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 we're not making you jump through any hurdles to to win a prize but i will ask this time around, if you can, if you can find it within yourself that say, Hey, they're being cool enough to give out some cool stuff. I'll be cool enough to, uh, head over to iTunes, give them a nice review and five stars. Cause I think the last time I looked, we're, we're pretty close to hitting a hundred reviews on iTunes. So I would, I would totally like to, uh, hit that number. So, Hey, you don't have to. Not a requirement. We're still going to do the contest. So we're gonna, you know what? We went an entire week and nobody gave us five stars. Nobody gave us a review. Fuck it. We're not doing the contest. No, we're not going to do that. It sounds like something I would do, but we're not going to. But we would appreciate it. My famous last words. Uh, I don't. I, I don't really have any. I, I feel like talking for two and a half hours. That's enough. <laughs> but you. I don't know. No, what? that was literally what I said. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> so we talked enough. What are you going to do? Uh, the only thing I would say is, uh, hey, remember to click like if you uh, enjoyed this this video, if you enjoyed hanging out with us tonight. Uh, click subscribe if you didn't. That helps. Uh, if you're watching this on a replay, have some things to say, by all means, leave it in the comment section. Let us know. Ian loves to, uh, to what is it? The pithy banter. The, en the enjoyable back he's, and forth. He's always all up in there. It's right? funny. <laughs> so remember to subscribe on the UbiTube. Follow us on social media. If you ever want to listen to a replay, we're always there on your favorite podcast platform like Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, whatever. So help us out. Subscribe to that content. Leave us a review. And you can find links to our social media, podcasts, apps, and more. I'm never going to be able to say podcast apps correctly. Uh, but it's always included in the show notes. And as everything goes, find it on tealtownusa.com. If you'd like to join us on Discord, hit up. That's a, that's another thing you can hit up Hockey Jerk for. Uh, mm -hmm. He is the uh, the deacon of the Discord, if you will. Did you have another mm -hmm. title? Uh, well, I've been saying the ch the Discord server chief. Oh, chief of chiefing. Sure, that's you fine. are chief of chiefing. So with that, uh, it was a hell of a long, uh, <laughs> a long show as we tend to do, because you know, the problem is we save it all up and then we just let her go mm -hmm. <laughs> on a Sunday. But again, only two games next week. We're probably going to, uh, lighten it up. Maybe we'll try to do that throughout the, the next couple of shows <laughs> before we get to Christmas, unless you have time to kill on Christmas and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go catch up on those 18 hours of podcasts that fuck knowledge just did. So with that, we thank you so much for watching or listening, depending on your platform. But thanks for hanging out with us and tuning in. And we will catch you all next Sunday at our normal time. So until next time. <laughs>